All right. Well, guys, with all of that said, let's get this started. We're starting a brand new chapter. And continue. We're on day 297. The timing, Nate. The timing. I love it. How's it going, Nate? Good to see you, dude. Thank you so much for the subscription. How are you doing, Nate? Let me drop you guys some tokens. What's new? What you been up to? How was your weekend? Okay, yeah, so day 297. Oh yeah, and don't forget, we're having all kinds of family problems at home. One of our kid is enrolled in like this group, which is kind of the government propaganda, I wanna say funded Boy Scouts group. And then I think our daughter seems to be joining this resistance group as well. So there's all kinds of division in the family. Oh, that's right, Nate, your new job. And it was pretty good. Having a pretty good first day is a really good sign because typically the first day can be real stressful, confusing. If they don't have their stuff together at work, you're just kind of left there hanging without much to do. So that's really good that you had a good first day and congratulations again, Nate, that's awesome. Now, is this gonna change up your uh, streaming schedule or anything like that? Or is it pretty much similar hours to what you had before? Oh, that's so cool. That's honestly the most important thing to a new job, Nate, is your coworkers. If you um, can have a good time with all your coworkers and get along with them and it's chill, that makes your work days go by so much faster and you don't dread work because you're actually gonna go hang out with friends, essentially. And 99, the winter was pretty cold. It even got to about 15 degrees for a couple of days. Yeah, no, that never happens here. I don't think I've ever seen it below 30 here, really, maybe for like a second in like the middle of the night, but not very long. Like we never get snow, anything like that here. I know, they're so stressful, Weave at home. I totally agree. And it's gonna help your sleep streaming schedule. That's awesome, Nate. You'll be working a regular nine to five, so you can always be free on the evenings. That makes planning ahead and having a schedule so much easier, Nate. That's awesome, rock on, congrats. Okay, so where are we at with our family? You wake up still partly in shock with what you saw on the news last night. What you had to do to edit the news, wait, what you had to edit on the news last night. That was when Jeremy killed himself. When you come downstairs, you find your family sat in the living room waiting for you. All right, let's take a seat on the sofa next to Sam. Sam's our partner. Sam swallows, hesitating before starting. We were so worried about you last night. After Jeremy with the gun, Sam chokes down a sob. It was awful on national television. How could he do that? And now? After a horrible pause, Sam finally asks, are you okay, honey? Remember, I did not cut away when we were recording that video. I let the whole thing play out. I'm just gonna say, I can't believe he's gone. It's terrible. Oh, I saw some like leaked news about that, Hasi, but that would be very cool. I'd be very excited to see what they do with that. And you had ice storms in the winter, 99? <laughs> So is that, it gets cold enough where you actually have to like worry about stuff with your house, right? <laughs> like, oh gosh, are the pipes going to freeze over? Sam glances at Charlie, then back to you. We saw that you chose to play that tape. They paused before continuing, and I couldn't help but wonder why. I played that prop, the uh, Resistance, what is it called? Distrust, I think is the name of the group. Um, I'm going to say it seemed like the right thing to do. I'm starting to, you know, not trust this government at all. <laughs> we would tell them, think of the children. I love it. They have to learn sometime. What? That's not good enough. Disrupt are bad people. And I can't believe you did that. Well, we can see where Sam, Sam's uh, loyalties lie. Charlie's outburst seemed to come out of nowhere. And no one in the room is prepared for it. Do you even think about how this stuff affects people? You're a f***ing idiot. Now, Charlie's... If I'm remembering right, Charlie's kind of the jerk that doesn't like us because we didn't help him out against the government stuff. So you would think he would like this, unless I'm thinking, is that our kid? I'm trying to get the names mixed up. Sam tries to interject, Charlie, but he's already slammed the door. Charlie always was a bit black and white about this sort of thing. Oh no, <laughs> see, look what we're doing already. For what it's worth, Alex, I think you were in an impossible situation and somehow you managed to make the right call. Sam throws their arms around you. Aww. Only you were stuck in that studio having to make that choice. No one could criticize what you did, and I'm proud of you. Aw, you were never so grateful to have Sam support you. We did make some sacrifices for Sam. That might be it. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking, Weepatome. Either Charlie is 
the family member we didn't help out. I think it's our wife's brother or could be our son. <laughs> we have we have kids as well. Wholesome Sam. I love it. Relationship goals. 100%. You take a deep breath and gather your thoughts. It's all a lot to take in. You're not sure you fully processed what happened last night, let alone what Charlie and Sam think about it all. You sigh and absentmindedly turn on the TV. <laughs> I like that. We're going back into that groove, just absorbing whatever the TV tells us. It's nice that you've at least got some company. The TV is playing through some old Western show, but it's not quite as distracting as you'd hoped. You were never going to please everyone. That's very true. <laughs> I don't remember our son's name. <laughs> Nice. Very appropriate quote. <laughs> oh, yeah, you definitely want to check this game out, Nate. Well, thank you so much for the lurk, dude. I really appreciate that. And congrats on your uh, successful first day on the job. I can't wait to hear more later. Okay, wow. Six months later. It's been six months since you and Sam last discussed grandma's ever increased... Oh, no, not six months. It's been like 60 days. Um, since you last discussed Grandma's ever-increasing medical costs, and Emma, while very pleasant, has proved an expensive uh, a nurse as you'd feared. You can't quite believe it's been that long already, but the sanctions are really starting to hit home now. And unfortunately, the government's only solution to help the alien elderly is a trip to the transition center. Why does everything have to come back to money, right? Right? Yeah, so right now it's been practically an entire year in game time since we started the story. This time, it's you at the kitchen table, surrounded by bills and paperwork, when Sam comes to join you. Today, Emma told you that there was really nothing more you could do, except an expensive experimental new treatment that might not even help. Sometimes, your mom wants the treatment. More often, she talks about visiting the transition center. It's hard to know what she really wants. Sam puts a hand on yours. What are we going to do, honey? She's your mother. It has to be your choice. Ooh. I don't think she wants to live in this like this anymore. It's hard, but it's time for the transition center, or she's my mom. We have to do whatever we can. Let's get the treatment. N knowing what I know about the government in this game, I'm going to say we got to do whatever we can to keep our mom at home. What do you guys think? <laughs> I want to make this a little bit more democratic. What are your ideas? Oh, that sounds familiar, Weebatome. I do remember a quote like that. I can't think of what game that was from, though. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I think we're going to keep our mom around. It's going to hurt. Now we are current... Well, wealth is now worrying debt. Oof. It's a difficult choice. You never know when you might need that money, particularly for the kids. What if Charlie gets in an accident? What if something happens to Susie while she's abroad and she needs help? But what if you could give them a few more good years with their grandmother? Surely that's worth the cost. Yeah, now we're broke again. Oh man, we've just been teetering on poverty this entire game. Now it's been exactly one year. A holiday update. Just as you finished, or you're finishing up breakfast, Sam comes in with a post. Oh, we got a postcard from Susie. I hope she's having fun on her trip. I hope she doesn't need money. Sam reads it out loud as you finish getting ready for work. So I've seen what feels like the most of Kyrgyzstan. Really cool place. That's so cool. Is that a real place, Kyrgyzstan? I don't think I've heard of that. Um, hope Chippy enjoyed the gift. And before you say anything, yes, you were right to make me uh, pack the extra pair of socks. Sam gives you a small kick under the table. This music, is this like from Kyrgyzstan? Next, we got to the train to Konislava. Uh, Much warmer and loads of beaches to enjoy. I could have stayed there forever, but I had to head to San Palmarino before it got too cold. And I'm so glad we did. We've probably got one or two more stops before heading home, but I'll be back in time for Christmas, I promise. Hope everyone's doing well. Love, Susie. It sounds like it's been one hell of a trip worth every penny. Oh, it's just made up in the game? Okay, I figured as much. <laughs> Kind of reminded me of some of those like country names that South Park comes up with. Like Durka Durkistan. <laughs> it's like that.
Oh no, do I have to deal with the temperature gauge again? Day 371, the 20 week war. Whoa, there's new buttons. See, now that this might be a thing where we can go ahead and let them push some stuff onto the news, right? Okay, so what tapes do we want to play? Siege Survival Kit? That sounds amazing. Oh, power. That's right. Oh, it's nighttime. News, don't they? At I think this is the first time we've done this at nighttime. Oh. The SS Fun Ship? Right and let's use that uh, makeup cream. I want to see what's happening to that poor woman. Oh, great. So they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. Okay, looks like we don't have to deal with the fans, so that's good. What are these things? Can I tell people when to applaud or laugh and stuff? It looks like they've upgraded this. The button looks different, doesn't it? Or is that just my imagination? After the weather and public information going in five four three good evening this is the national nightly news there we go I'm Megan Wolf. It's just make it by yourself our main headlines tonight company of heroes skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the world I always forget to meet that blockade. Advanced strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the gruesome picture. zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert. Unable to work out where or when the next strike will come. Sadly, however, more casualties were reported today. Hope I remember all the mechanics. The weeks it's been a while. This war make ever more demands on our armed services. Those numbers will tragically only continue to rise. Don't starve. Gosh, this is all way too food realistic moved now. moved from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time and the government's coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. Can't make it all depressing. And judging by the looks on this happy family's faces, it can't come a moment too soon. Yeah, rations. We're getting a good meal tonight <laughs> on the government, just like the rest of us. Seven days to die. The recent decision to allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centers has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final years, the expansion of the service has been met with relief by the many organizations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. The transition centers have reported larger than expected numbers. It's been a long time. I don't think they're going to well talk about and able um, to provide a complete and meaningful service to all who choose to use it. Populous. More than 11% of the population have thus far failed to register for a team membership card. A Number worrying three. statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. Oh, While applications everyone needs are one still now. open for those who like to run fashionably late, they can expect a few tricky questions from advance. Start me up. Disrupt spokesman Alan James held an impromptu rally today in the oh, northern city no. of Mankipur. Large crowds gathered to hear the band speaker prove Three. Disrupt are still able to capture the public's imagination. A representative from the Manklipool Community Cohesion Team described the event as mostly peaceful. But it looks like Disrupt aren't going quietly into the night. And finally, absent friends. Oh, he's going to talk about Jeremy, or she is. Sad news today as the grave of former National Nightly News host Jeremy Donaldson yeah. is vandalized by radical Disrupt activists. Aww. The much-loved broadcaster suffered a very tragic public breakdown ten weeks ago in an incident which ultimately cost him his life. I'm going to go with A passionate three. and rebellious man, always willing to question authority, Jeremy was posthumously celebrated with a team service award by Advance for his outstanding dedication to journalistic. Yeah, they could care less about Jeremy. But first this evening, That's with just the a war PR about move. to enter its 21st punishing week, and people hurting up and down the country, I'll be grilling unpredictable Prime Minister Peter Clement. No, not a full year. This is like, I think, 60 days That's later. coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Oh, we're moving. Spacebar is a sensor. Gotta remember that.
Oops, lost a little bit. That one's moving pretty quick now. There we go. In part two, I'm a little overexcited. What the heck? Deadly Peter. Let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement, who's speaking to us. Oh, that was their hacking, wasn't it? Good evening, I didn't press a button to switch it. Have we caught you exercising? Oh, have we started? Yes, that's right, Miss Wolf. Just a few minor adjustments. I mean, nothing. Yeah, I think they might have been messing with me. I didn't press a button to change the camera. As my old man used to say, just because she won't take it up the shit, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try for a quick fiddle up the car Language. Oh, I missed that. Not doing good this one. It's always rough getting used to it again. Oh, oh shitter. It's shitter, isn't it? Yep, that's the one. And can you tell oh, no, us not this again. About this can you tell us what's brought about? Today, I spoke to the people of Mankey Hall. Ah, uh, so, see, this and is when I, I get to choose whether I want to broadcast their stuff I did or not. something I would never have done in my old life. I'm going to broadcast I their listened. stuff. I listened to Jean. Who told me that although she has financial for Jeremy. security for her and her family for the first time in her life? Oh, was it me? My bad. Ah, it's not working. There we go. By the worry of being a burden on his children. Sometimes I have a hard time pressing the middle mouse button on my mouse for some reason. Him he is exactly that. I listened to Anna. Spends her lunch times in the school cafeteria eating alone. I'm assuming I can do this and still get good ratings. Class, who isn't a go getter? They have never met these three, and they are of different ages and social backgrounds, but they share a common experience. They share a nagging feeling that there is something deeply wrong in our utopia. And I share that feeling. This thing's starting to move a lot faster. <laughs> In the days oh, I, I see if I was still on camera I three, my bad. The country, but you don't need to wait for me. Disruptor everywhere. Every bar, every street corner. Look for us and you will find us. You are not alone. And advance are not the only team. Oh yeah. Also, it doesn't seem That's cool how it like combined at the end there. To be going abroad when the rest of the country is grounded. And yet Julia Salisbury announced today that she'll be visiting Svenland during this year's winter break. Is that really an example of team spirit? What? Did you know Again? about this scale? No one tells me. Ten weeks ago, Jeremy Donaldson took control of the national nightly news. And now we're getting more information about Jeremy. He tried to warn us all about the now abandoned top secret military lab at Grantham and Downs. We may never know exactly what was being done there. But Jeremy Donaldson made us look. And this is just one of the reasons he is considered Disrupt's first martyr. And you know what? I think there's every chance he'd hate that. I don't think I need to censor it when I'm on this times feed. In a professional context. And usually he exposed me for the grandstanding fool mm -hmm. I was back then, but... For some reason, I always enjoyed it. I liked him. I liked his wit, his jagged edges, and most of all, I liked his total dedication to the truth. He died for that truth, died as an individual, for freedom. And by adorning his resting place with I'm our pretty sure those swears have to do with the other video emblem, feed. We will help to keep both him and his spirit of relentlessness alive as well, <laughs> we pretend they're just making chairs you will not be forgotten it's no big deal <laughs> meanwhile back to this guy yeah, more like him every day. I will take that as a compliment Prime Minister later on this evening your co-leader Julia Salisbury is going to give a national address from team headquarters can you give us a hint of what she's going to say um, yes. Well, uh... He looks like he I could care less. Sorry, will be sorry, you imagine? The usual up no, what, what, I, mean, what do, I mean is... You do know about this broadcast, don't you, Prime Minister? Well, I'm, I'm sure I did. 
Um, but Julia and I have no secrets from each other. We don't memorize each other's bloody diaries. Man, either. when I was on that wrong Neil camera Mann for so long, say, <laughs> it was freaking me out. To get a job done, it's like, oh no, not on my points. Don't get down in the pube. What else you got? Sorry. Cards. What else? I always do that too early in the my beginning. My life. Do you want to rustle through? Get out. Refill my ass. Ta. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, okay. What music do you listen to when you work out? Here comes the swearing. Well, Gail tells me that I work out to the little C, but I have absolutely no fucking idea who that is. Oh. Do you think the C stands for? It stands for collaborative, Prime Minister. Yeah, <laughs> little that's collaborative. Uh, how's rationing affecting you? It's hard. But we get by, you just have to learn to get by on the basics. Take comfort in each other. I've got Mrs. C and many a fine single malt. That doesn't sound too much like rationing, does it? So for a decent night's sleep, of course. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. When we come back, it's time for the culture spot with Lil C and a world premiere performance of her new song. Oh, yeah, I, I can't wait to see that to stuff. That. We'll this. After this. Whoa. One minute back, everybody. And that is what happens when you wander from the car. I don't think he knew about her statement. I, I was a little bit late on that commercial. When you mentioned it, Bozeman's face turned a color that I think you call embolism. Am I in trouble? Bozeman? Nah, you're like the daughter he never had. <laughs> Suppose the higher ups might fire him though. I actually don't leave it to him. No, I need to take a look at what I got and what Is looks like it makes sense to stream what? next. What I'm civilized. I've got a big I've back catalog. <laughs> Way too many games. What is this commercial? Remember the last time we boiled a duck orange? I concur absolutely. The hell are we showing? There's barely enough milk to undermine the tea. George from the club. Oh no. Yeah, we're gonna have to use these buttons now. It's cool though, they take away some mechanics and give you some new ones. At least they don't just keep piling them on. We've had our biggest and best brains working on this for months. And we've got you covered with the Remington Spiss Siege Survival Box. Oh yeah, the survival box. A red wine, where you can hardly taste the chemicals. Some red Ew. meat we grew in our production laboratory. Ew. Chocolate so salty, you'd believe it came from Svenland. Ew. The list of luxuries is endless. At least seven. Should chocolate be really salty? And we've I've even never had a before. random twist. Oh, she's big, really big. Really? Yeah. Is she any good? Nah, of course not. Bit dog shit. Oh. My kids go mad for her, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to have to use this Hang on. applause kids. thing? Yeah, I've got about six or seven, I think. All right. Thanks for coming back. Later, we have an exciting new feature that we just know you're going to love, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delightful Susie May in All My Daughter's Children's Men before taking the music industry by storm this year with her debut album smashing the chart records at the age of just 20. Let's give it up so and welcome first. Lil C. <laughs> Have we seen her before? She looks familiar. You look incredible. Oh, thanks, babe. I'm doing this new regime and it really does work. Ooh. What's the regime? And my manager suggested it to me. It basically involves bathing in like cabbage water and then having the leaves sucked out of you while you sleep. That's wow, nasty. Is, is that healthy? Well, look at me, Meg. The leaves are my only nourishment. <laughs> yep, they certainly are. Now, you'll have to forgive me, but I'm somewhat <laughs> of a super fan, so I'm sorry if I get a bit starstruck. Oh, bless you. I've never actually heard of you before, so if you do get a little tongue-tied, I can always carry the interview. Ouch. Oh, that's good to know. So your first Rude. album, F My Face Together, it hit shelves this summer and it just exploded. I mean, what was that like for you? Bonkers, just yeah. so weird. I was in all the papers and the magazines. Overnight, I went from that. Like, you know, we've done one game I would like to stream. That, like, sexy little girl is that new the, the Quarry wow. game? But that I gotta check with Andy lot. to see if she wants to play that really, or not. It was just like any other morning. You know, get up at five, go on a four mile run, have three meetings on my cabbage bath, but then only then was my dad actually talking to me. Oh, of course. I mean, the famed country singer, Billy Bob Jean Short. I didn't know you'd been estranged. There's nothing that strange about it, Megan. 
Okay, yes, he may believe that aliens told him to hate women, but there really isn't anything to prove that he's wrong. That's what aliens do. Uh-huh. So, uh, this newfound explosion into your popularity, I mean, did that change your life? Um, well, I had to start wearing, like, nicer underwear, you know, for the paparazzi. But as the manager says, best to make the most of it before I'm 30. <laughs> Is that right? Oh my gosh. So, w w what's the album about? So I thought it was about like how pretty and great I am, a bit, Alex. but actually it's about monetizing youth, I think, or about like promoting an unrealistic standard of beauty or something. Mm. Your manager Ooh. again. <laughs> yeah. Just he tell says the insecurity truth. is an opportunity. Ooh. <laughs> Do you think he'd be happy with you telling us all this? <laughs> telling you all what? It really doesn't matter what I say here. I'll do my dancing and then this part will it all be forgotten about. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're going to see some of those famous dances <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. very shortly because you're going to be performing your new single, aren't you? Yep, it's from my album, Put oh, no. It In My A Together, and it's out tomorrow. My friend let her 13-year-old son join the go-getters. He's occupied now. Busy, even. His room's never been tidier. Yeah, I should not have done that, uh, sending our kid to the go-getters. And sometimes she catches him staring at her. And last week, she found him searching through her papers. When confronted, he always had a plausible answer, a good answer. But somehow it's too good. Oh, there we go. Like it's been prepared in advance. Mm -hmm. Possibly by them. Yeah, I just saw I got an achievement in Steam, probably for supporting no longer tell us. the resistance. And when we find out, we will tell you. We will hack into your news broadcasts. We will defend your right to information. We will resist and we will disrupt. It's so hard to believe yeah. this guy yeah. leading this whole thing, you know? You know, like better. But I don't know. I love doing autographs and having somebody dress me and tell me what to wear. Oh, oh, whoops. I didn't realize I was off a little bit on you that. always want to do music? My bad. Uh, well, ever since I was a little girl, I did. I'd sit in front of the radio and as soon as my favorite girl group would come on, I'd be called on my cassette. But then my dad would come in and tell me to turn it off and to go back upstairs and start practicing again. Oh, you so, sorry, is, you, is your dad your manager? Yeah, which can be tough. And sometimes when it gets really hard, he'll say, make Quagler proud and you might just survive childbirth. <laughs> well, you know what, despite anything, you'll make me proud. Oh, if only your opinion was as valuable as his. <laughs> and on that problematic note, uh, you're going to be singing your song for us soon, aren't you? Uh, tell me about it, tell me about it. So it's called These Babies Gonna Bring You Home. Quite a bit, 99. What the heck the happened to him? The way up here. But you know what, it's actually all right. And don't worry, all my work is team approved. All right then, well, you can go and get ready for that. <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit. It was a very specific type of pleasure <laughs> to chat to her, and I just can't wait to hear this. Oh, so here's Lil C with an exclusive first performance of her new track, These Babies. I'm supposed to do applause still, Take I it believe. Away. It's the Force's favorite, the Queen of Team, here to break in your blockades. Lil I love how many C. different. Um, Musical numbers I have in this game kind of surprises me. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to do that very distracting beat thing, huh? There's a place in me that's empty. I want that meet you back in only you can feel that crack in me. I'm under sea, so come and free me. I'm not going to do it on every single beat. I'm going to just do every, like, two beats. It's a little bit less distracting that way. All the other ones had very consistent beats. This song is a little bit more mixed up. Maybe all that rock band on the weekend helped. Nope. Hey, 
Hey, what's up, coffee? I wish I could have some coffee right now. How you doing, dude? The only camera that ever shows green is the one on her. Try to keep it at times eight. See some action. So I lost it. And break my sanctions. Actually, if you just do every single beat, you quickly get to times eight. Really not too bad, huh, we tell him. <laughs> well, if that doesn't distract you from the world outside, I don't know what will. <laughs> I'd like to thank Phil C for, well, for doing that. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> After the break, we'll finally be revealing the new se segment of our show that we just know you're going to love. Was I supposed we'll to do applause or anything? Right I'd totally miss that if I and was. We're out. I know, I switched a little bit too early there, Hasifa. It looked kind of awkward. She's just kind of like sitting there, like, oh my God, what's going on? Say, thank you so much for letting me do this. It really uh, means a lot to me, you know, yeah. to be able to promote myself on such a mainstream platform like the news. Uh, well, don't worry about it. And you know what? Good luck for the future. Take care of yourself. This industry can be crazy sometimes. <laughs> Watch out for that father of yours, won't you? Oh, no, no. I manage myself. It's just, you know, for the public to have that certain perspective. You know, oh, like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, right. Um, and Michael? What was Michael? It? What about Billy Bob Jean Shorts? Oh, that? my dad. He's such a sweetheart. We both had the same agents, you know, like it just made sense. Both of us for our image together. Wow. And okay. Michael, I want to see the revenue share for the clothing line and get me a GNT before my meeting with the Louvre guys. <laughs> Look at that <laughs> image of her. She looks I'm kind of freaked out. What is going on there? <laughs> Honestly, all the music except for the. <laughs> That one group where they're almost like a. They're experimental, like dance group. That one's kind of bad. I totally miss that. Do I look like the sort of person who counts things? No, no. I think I just had to pick the right choices here to react to them correctly. I'll tell you what. Just keep adding flowers until. Yeah, all the soundboard. Oh, this is gonna be terrible. I can't wait. Absolutely, right away. Ten seconds. I want to see Five, that cruise line commercial. Four, three. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for part three. We've been teasing you about our new feature all night. And now the wait is finally over. I can reveal that every night on the show, we'll be treated to an episode of an informative and hilarious new segment called The Notice Board. It stars some top talent and we're very excited about it. But before we see it, let's have a quick chat with the writer, director and phenomenon, may I say, Jeff Algebra, guys. Actually, I've, uh, I've got the algebra. That's Algebra guy again? Now. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> Well, yeah, very fancy. I suppose you need a new name now that you're a successful artist. Well, exactly. I'm earning enough to pay taxes now. <laughs> oh. It's shit. And how does Angela feel about all this? Who? Your, uh, your wife. Oh, that must be uh -huh. in the past. <laughs> oh, God, no. No. <laughs> no, she's long gone. No, she was holding me back. I'm with Norm now. We were married last month. <laughs> No. I love how he just laughs it off. Yeah. <laughs> and um, why did you write this? Hmm? What was your inspiration? Oh, well, I, I received a telephone call offering me 25 grand to write a protein sitcom. And I heard my father's voice. It said, Jeff, you listen here, boy. 
You make hay while the sun shines. You ring every penny you can get out of this. He goes on there too long. So I wheeled him down to the transition center, got out my typewriter and started clacking. Wow. <laughs> Utter shite. <laughs> and without further ado, let's give it up for the notice board. Oh, I can't click anything. You have to play a sound effect, Alex. I tried clicking it, but it wouldn't let me. I think I might have been too late. Alex, if you keep this up, you'll ruin the notice board and the actors won't be happy. Good morning, Miss Craven. Oh, morning, Ray. Everything all right, Mrs. Craven? You can only click you things when it's like first lights up. In closing time. Oh, Ray, it's those young louts. They vandalize. Okay, I gotta pay attention to what they're really game. saying. No! Yes! <laughs> They've written all sorts of obscene language and crude pictures, and I know it's those damn youths. <laughs> I don't know. It could be the vicar at closing time. I'm just worried they won't ever be uh, supposed to be laughter, I think. Members of the community. What if they never see the error of their ways and end up as social outcasts, such as shoplifters or bong rats? Don't worry, Mrs. Craven. This is a very supportive community, and I'm sure that in time, they will fit into this society like this key into this lock. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. I didn't even notice the colors at first. <laughs> see? Works like a charm. What a lovely way to put it, Ray. And just like that, we can unlock their future. Yes, yes. Wow. Look at all the letters in my collection. Are they acting? Oh, I think that one's addressed to me. What? This, this one? Oh, <laughs> so you're right. Is he stuck? Here it is. <laughs> it's a letter from my granddaughter, Bre Brenda. She says she got an A on her maths exam. Just a because picture. One of her friends has been helping her. She was always a team player, was our Brenda. What's up, losers? <laughs> No, it's Brad. He's the coolest guy in the village. That's right. I just got here on my motorbike. Oh, clear off, Brad. We don't want any of your <laughs> ilk around here. We don't take kindly Brad your dudes. tap around here. No, ruffians. Have you come to tag the notice board with your gang signs? No way. I've actually come to pin my resume on that notice board. I'm looking to do some tutoring after school. What did you say, tutoring? That's right. Math is very important. Math is very important. He's still the same algebra guy. Not at all. <laughs> you know what's sad is like a lot of these Shows would have the fake laugh tracks are actually used just like this. And not just urinating on churches or huffing glue. Hey, I haven't huffed glue for months. Well, blow me down. You, you know what? We misjudged you mm. based on how young and cool you are and not on your actions. <laughs> no joy. So it wasn't you who vandalized my shop last night or called me a almost don't recognize him, honestly. from the back of a chopper? No way. It can't have been me. I was too busy helping my friend Brenda with her maths homework. Could you speak? Ah, the maths. There? I thought for a minute there that you said 
Brenda! I did, you daft old sow. Did you hear that, Ray? Oh, yes, what a wonderful surprise. I now respect you as a man. Put her there, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the heck? Give us a hug. There's an earthquake? Whoa. That's not good. What the heck? How bad is it? I mean, I'm in California. I'm used to earthquakes, but... Oh, it's killing all the power. Well, that's not good. Now what? Or was that just an earthquake or something to do with the war they were talking about? Whoa! Um, yeah, power back on. Uh, sorry to interrupt the first groundbreaking episode of the notice board, but uh, we are receiving some breaking news. Okay, we're back on air. Um, I'm being told we are picking up reports from across the continent of what appear to be... Oh, God. Um, what appear to be nuclear explosions oh, in no. four major foreign cities. Initial estimates put the death toll into... Holy crap. Uh, they put them into millions. I'm, I'm being told we're experiencing um, some power shortages as a result, so apologies. Apologies for the interruption. And apparently we can go live now to team headquarters for an oh emergency gosh. broadcast from Prime Minister Julia Salisbury um, any moment. Yes. Oh, this yes, would be so terrifying. Good evening, citizens and leaders of the world. Minutes ago, operatives working for Advance detonated nuclear explosives simultaneously in four major cities across the continent. We have similar devices in 58 other urban centers and will not hesitate to detonate them if our conditions are not... We are hearing stories of power fluctuations and what could be minor earthquakes uh, throughout the continent. Stand by. Wait, they detonated nukes in their own country? Is that what she was saying? We've lost contact with our benefactors in Urkistan and Konislava. Well, our equipment seems to be resetting. Um... Can we get this confirmed? Can we get this verified? I need this verified. I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you are receiving this, but if you are, then you have to know. You have to know what's being done What's being done right now to our neighbours, this is unprecedented. Our government has committed an act, multiple acts of mass destruction in our name. Oh my gosh. Nor do I care how you voted. You didn't vote for this. None of us did. They, we, this can't be. Uh, we are uh, waiting further news and oh, oh. What if they we will expect your complete acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. Thank you. What? <laughs> I need to hear that. <laughs> That's right, I, and our daughter is abroad. My personal life in my job. It's not relevant. Or important. Um, so many of you may be surprised to learn that I have a brother. His name is David. And right now I... I can't get a stupid face out of my head. He's a researcher and he's currently travelling the continent for work. And I don't... I don't know where he is right now so scary and I should imagine that there are many of you sitting at home tonight digesting this this news and you also have loved ones on the continent in Urkistan or Javier or San Palmarino or or Konislava which is where David was when I last spoke to him three days ago so when I tell you I know how you are feeling tonight believe me I do but I also know that there's 
there's a flow to events. I see it every day here. I know that although tonight it feels like we may be in a time of fear and darkness, we may actually be at the break of a new dawn. She's still we covering for yet. them? We can't know that yet, but together we will find out. And I will be here every night, feeling what you are feeling. And with your help, maybe we can all get to that brave new world. My name's Megan Wolf. Let's make tomorrow better. And we're out. Commercial break. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. So networks are overloaded. Okay. We'll find him. Do we know exactly, exactly which cities were hit? Or Megan. Megan. We will find him. Oh, that's so sad. Oh my lord, there is a lot to unpack in those behind the scenes things that we did not look at. My god. What is this terrifying thing over here on the commercials? <laughs> oh no, she lost all of her hair. She's got like super dry, scary burned skin, completely lost her hair from that shampoo. What are they trying to put on her now? I don't know. I feel bad for her. Okay, let's see what happened. Oh my goodness. We had some really good ones and a really bad one, as I remembered all the controls. I There was that one section where I hung around the wrong camera too long and just went bam, 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 bam. All right. Oh yeah, we can go to more info too. Yep, this is where I lost it. And I lost a little bit here. I forget what that was. An exceedingly poor edit. Ah, thank you. Thank you. A disrupt ruined the broadcast or enhanced. Depends on how you look at it, right? Hey, we got our full wages. We're still in worrying debt. That's not good. Okay, so let's uh watch what we actually put in there, the entire thing. So I think it's this one. Before we join Megan yeah. Wolf and the team for tonight's National Nightly News, there's just time to take a peek at what's coming up later tonight on Channel One. At 6.30, it's Ration Kitchen with Jordan Rankley. And tonight, he'll <laughs> be screaming name, at some pensioners Kitchen. while they try and fashion a nutritious meal. Oh, we can skip that. This intro I thing is always really long. It's the 140th day of war. Our main headlines tonight. Company of Heroes. Skirmishes on land and sea again today as our armed forces tested the metal of the World Council's illegal blockade. Advances strategy of multiple small-scale incursions into the disputed zone is certainly keeping the enemy on high alert. Unable to work out where or when the next strike will come. So, hold on. They've been at war for 140 days? Like, I know that other governments weren't happy with, like, how they were handling things. And there was, like, uh, um... You know they were they were blocking bringing stuff in there was all the um other you know diplomacy things going on but i don't remember them being in a full-on war did that just happen while we were on break or did i miss something previously sadly however more casualties were reported today and as the weeks and months of this war make ever more demands on our armed services those numbers will tragically only continue to rise don't starve Advance's food program moved from strength to strength today as rationing depots were opened in the last remaining unfed areas of the territory. The rationing depots have been constructed in record time and the government's agricultural coordination strategy has seen shelves restocked with increasing regularity. Okay. And judging by the looks on this happy family's faces, it can't come a moment too soon. They'll be getting a good meal tonight on the government, just like the rest of us. Seven days to die. The recent decision to... This can't be a this can't be a coincidence. The 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 titles of these stories, Don't Starve, a great game I like to play with Andy, a survival game. Seven Days to Die, that's like a zombie survival game. I feel like they're doing that on purpose. To allow those with long-term health conditions to access transition centers has today been declared an overwhelming success. Previously available only to those in their final years, 
The expansion of the service has been met with relief by the many organizations calling for it to be opened up to the wider community. We're about to send our we the transition send our centers grandma have there. reported larger than expected numbers, but report that they are coping well and able to provide a complete and meaningful service to all who choose to use it. Populous. More than 11% of the population strategy. have thus far failed to register for a team membership card, a worrying statistic given that the cards are a legal requirement from midnight tonight. While applications are still open for those who like to run fashionably late, they can expect a few tricky questions from advance. The music's Start like really up. intense. Disrupt spokesman Alan James Wait, what was the last one? Start Me Up? I don't know of a game called that. I think there's a song called Start Me Up. Drug spokesman Alan James held an impromptu rally today in the northern city of Mankipal. Large crowds gathered to hear the band speaker prove Disrupt are still able to capture the public's imagination. A representative from the Mankipal Community Cohesion Team described the event as mostly peaceful. But it looks like Disrupt aren't going quietly in. And finally, absent friends. I'm not sure what that is. Sad news today as the grave of much, former Alex. National Nightly News host Jeremy Donaldson is vandalized by radical disrupt activists. The much loved broadcaster suffered a very tragic public breakdown 10 weeks ago in an incident which ultimately cost him his life. A passionate and rebellious man, always willing to question authority, Jeremy was posthumously celebrated with a team service award by Advance for his outstanding dedication to journalism. 1985 is the current but year. But first this evening, with the war about to enter its 21st punishing week and people hurting up and down the country, I'll be grilling unpredictable Prime Minister Peter Clement in an exclusive interview from his home in Lanfordshire. That's coming up on tonight's National Night. I can't wait National to see that entire News. interview like behind the scenes. I mean, maybe the transition centers are great, Alex. <laughs> I don't trust anything this government does. I like how they even change these nightly national nightly news kind of uh, transition screens those are way different than they used I'm to be I'm a little overexcited are all war themed Stop peddling Peter Oh But first tonight <laughs> let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement who's speaking to us from his home in Whoops Lampshire. I did that on accident Good evening That was Prime a really Minister. good cut actually Have we caught you exercising Oh have we started Yes, that's right, Miss Wolf. I have just a few minor adjustments. I mean, nothing drastic. I haven't joined the gym or anything. As my old man used to say, just because she will <laughs> up the shit, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try for a quick fiddle up the car. Language, park. Prime Minister. Oh my gosh. What? Quick fiddle? What, what's wrong? <laughs> oh, shitter. <laughs> it's shitter, isn't it? Yep, that's the one. And I was so far off on those. Um, bleeps. Today, I spoke to the people of Mankeypool, and when I was finished, I stuck around, and I did something I would never have done in my old life. I listened. I listened to Jean, who told me that although she has financial security for her and her family for the first time in her life, she finds also, for the first time, that she can no longer sleep peacefully. And she I listen to Klein, who is preoccupied by the worry of being a burden. That's cool. As I was struggling, you get to see that. the days until they sit him down and tell him he is exactly that. I listen to Anna, who spends her lunch times in the school cafeteria eating alone, because she is the only girl in her class who isn't a go-getter. They have never met these three, and they are of different ages and social backgrounds, but they share a common experience. They share a nagging feeling that there is something deeply wrong in our utopia. And I share that feeling. And maybe you do too. In the days and weeks ahead, I will be speaking throughout the country, but you don't need to wait for me. Disruptor everywhere. Every bar, every street corner. Look for us and you will find us. You are not alone. And advance, and not the only team. Gosh, it's crazy how just oh, yeah. realistic also, this is to current events. 
It doesn't seem very advanced to be going abroad when the rest of the country is grounded. And yet Julia Salisbury announced today that she'll be visiting Svenland during this year's winter break. Is that really an example of team spirit? What? Did you know about it? <laughs> what else Ten is she saying? Jeremy Donaldson took control of the national nightly newsroom. He tried to warn us all about the now abandoned top secret military lab at Grantham and Downs. We may never know exactly what was being done there, but Jeremy Donaldson made us look. And this is just one of the reasons Whoops. he is considered Disrupt's first martyr. And you know what? I think there's every chance he'd hate that. I only met him a few times in a professional context, and usually he exposed me for the grandstanding fool I was back then, but mm -hmm. for some reason, I always enjoyed it. I liked him. I liked his wit, his jagged edges, and most of all, I liked his total dedication to the truth. He died for that truth, died as an individual, for freedom, and by adorning his resting place with our colours and our emblem, we will help to keep both him and his spirit of relentlessness alive. Rest well, Jeremy. That's so sad. Will not be forgotten. I'm watching you, and you know what? You get more like him every day. What is he talking about? <laughs> I will take that as a compliment. Prime Minister, later on this evening, your co-leader, Julia Salisbury, is going to give a national address from team headquarters. Can you give us a hint of what she's going to say? Um, yes. Well, uh, I, I imagine that there sorry, will be sorry, the imagine? usual... Uh, no, what, what, I, what do you, I mean is... You do know about this broadcast, don't you, Prime Minister? Well, I'm, I'm sure I did. <laughs> he um, doesn't know. Julia and I have no secrets from each other. We don't memorise each other's bloody diaries either. As me old mum used to say, if you wanted to get a job done, bog down in the pubes. What else have you got? Sorry? Only cards. What else? A little piece of my life. Do you want to rustle through? Get out. Refill my last. Ta. Well, oh, come on. Uh, come on. Okay. What music do you listen to when you work out? <laughs> Here come the stupid questions. Well, Gail tells me that I work out to the little C, but I... Absolutely no fucking idea what that is. Oh. And do you think the C stands for? It stands for collaborative, Prime Minister. Yeah, actually, that, that does make more sense, actually. <laughs> uh, how's rationing affecting you? It's hard, but we get by. You just have to learn to get by on the basics. Take comfort in each other. I've got Mrs. C, and many a fine single malt. I want for nothing. Except for a decent night's sleep. Never got into whiskey cool. myself. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. When we come back, it's time for the culture spot with Lil C and a world premiere performance of her new song. I genuinely can't wait to hear it. We'll be back <laughs> after this. I love that transition. I accidentally hit the wrong button. Oh, I can't wait to see the uh, behind the scenes stuff. Hi, I'm Sophia Remington. The CEO of Remington Swiss. What the hell were they selling? Like a attention. survival the box? The around your country has left people struggling to find just the basics. So where on earth are you supposed to go for the other essentials? The things that make life worth living. Remington Swiss. I positively loathe these sanctions, Jane. I can't remember the last time we boiled a duck orange. I concur absolutely, Brian. There's barely enough milk to undermine the tea. Oh, no. George from the club. He thought he had a chance as an avocado last Tuesday. He's dead now. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Woe is me. How did we ever fall so low? One, One is certain, certain a preferable, preferable way, way exists. exists. And you'd be right. We've had our biggest and best brains working on this for months. And we've got you covered with the Remington Swiss Siege Survival Box. Inside every blockade-busting box, you'll find the things you really missed. A red wine, where you can hardly taste the chemicals. 
some rare meat we grew in our production laboratory. Chocolate so salty, you'd believe it came from Spenlock. This sounds so gross. The list of luxuries is endless. At least seven. That's not endless. And we've even <laughs> added a random twist. One in every 100 boxes will contain... A golden flood! Looks like they Show us the lucky. flard! Remington Smith Siege Survival Boxes. So good you'll believe they were made somewhere else. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, we'll talk to you later, Alex. Thank you so much for joining. It is Thanks scary how back. realistic later, this game we have is. An oh my new gosh. That we just know you're going to love, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delightful Susie May in All My Daughter's Children's I liked how Before taking realistic the this girl was in the this interview. Year, with her debut album smashing the chart records at the age of just 20. Let's give it up and welcome Lil C. C's for collaborative. <laughs> Just say, you I'll skip through the incredible. music video, oh, but I just want to get all the dialogue. This new regime and it really does work. Ooh. What's the regime? And my manager suggested it to me. It basically involves bathing in like cabbage water and then having the leaves sucked out of you while you sleep. Wow, is is that healthy? Oh, well, look at me, Meg. The leaves are my only nourishment. <laughs> yep, they certainly are. Now, you'll have to figure that me, but I'm That fake tan spray or so, auto time and tanning bed, it looks oh, like. Oh, bless you. <laughs> I've never actually heard of you before, so if you do get a little tongue-tied, I can always carry the interview. Oh, that's good to know. So your first album, F My Face Together, it hit shelves this summer and Whoa. it just exploded. I mean, what was that There's like? a title. Bonkers, just yeah. so weird. I was in all the papers and the magazines. Overnight, I went from that, like, annoying little girl from that show to that, like, sexy little girl from that show. Wow. That must have been bizarre. <laughs> Not really. It was just like any other morning. You know, get up at five, go on a four-mile run, have three meetings on my cabbage bath, but then only then was my dad actually talking to me. Oh, of course. Four-mile run. country singer, Billy Bob Jean Short. I didn't know you'd been estranged. There's nothing that strange about it, Megan. Okay, yes, he may believe that aliens told him to hate women, but there really isn't anything to prove that he's wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, this newfound explosion into your popularity, I mean, did that change your life? Those aliens were um, right the whole time. Well, I had to start wearing, like, nicer underwear, you know, for the paparazzi. But as the manager says, best to make the most of it before I'm 30. <laughs> Is that right? So, what's the album about? So I thought it was about like how pretty and great I am, yeah. but actually it's about monetizing youth, I think, or about like promoting an unrealistic standard of beauty or something. Mm. Your manager again. <laughs> yeah, he says insecurity is an opportunity. Oh, <laughs> do you think he'd be happy with you telling us all this? <laughs> telling you all what? It really doesn't matter what I say here. I'll do my dancing and then this part will be It's so true. About. It's well, just so true. Well, well yeah, I mean, <laughs> We're going to see some of those famous dance moves very shortly because you're going to be performing your new single, aren't you? Yep, it's from my album, Put It In My A Together, and it's that. <laughs> my friend let her 13-year-old son join the go-getters. He's occupied now. Busy, even. His room's never been tidier. But he keeps notebooks he won't let her read. And sometimes she catches him staring at her. And last week, she found him searching through her papers. Mm. When confronted, he always had a plausible answer. Indoctrinated. A answer. Somehow it's too good. Like it's been prepared in advance. Or possibly by them. We want to know what the news will no longer tell us. And when we find out, we will tell you. We will hack into your news broadcasts. We will defend your right to information. We will resist and we will disrupt. Man, I could not have guessed Alan James being such a you know, revolutionist. Did you always want to do music? Uh, well, ever since I was a little girl, I did. I'd sit in front of the radio, and as soon as my favourite girl group would come on, I'd press record on my cassette, but then my dad would come in and tell me to turn it off and to go back upstairs and start practising again. Oh, you so, Sorry, is, you, is your dad your manager? <laughs> yeah, which can be tough, and sometimes when it gets really hard, he'll say, make Quagler proud and you might just survive childbirth. <laughs> well, 
You know what, despite anything, <laughs> you'll make me proud. Oh, if only your opinion was as valuable as his. <laughs> and on that problematic note, uh, you're going to be singing your song for us soon, aren't you? Uh, tell me about it, tell me about it. So it's called These Babies Gonna Bring You Home, and I actually got sent the lyrics in the car on the way up Every here. song you know name. It's actually all right. And don't worry, all my work is team approved. All right then, well, you can go and get ready for that. <laughs> we'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> It was a very specific type of pleasure <laughs> to chat to her, and I just can't wait to hear this. Oh, so here is Lil C with an exclusive first performance of her new track. She sounded more and more like Jeremy. Home. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we'll skip this part. The horse's favorite. <laughs> just kind of reading some of the. Uh, Lyrics is talking about like dying, being a soldier, a few things like that. Sounds like propaganda. Well, if that doesn't distract you from the world outside, <laughs> I don't know what will. <laughs> I'd like to thank Lil C for, well, for doing that. Don't go anywhere. After the break, we'll finally be revealing the new se segment of our show that we just know you're going to love. We'll be back right after this. Uh I'm always a little bit late cutting to commercial because I'm never sure, like, when if it's really time yet or something else is going to happen. I wondered what the advantages would be for me. Well, now I'm aboard the SS fun ship for a holiday so good I'm being paid to sing Oh, yeah, this is my company that I want to promote. Now out on a pleasure cruise, seeing several sights and drinking copious booze. I'd like my friends from work to take a good look at the cheap. This is terrible. Just like the brochures say, you can cheat on your wife. Whoa. It's a high class ocean ride. You can't afford it and it's fun since someone died. If you could be me now out on a foreign shore, down in every crack and with my butt burned roar, I'd let the kids back what home. The hell? Like <laughs> She's having so much fun. Pleasure core. Due to the ongoing military blockade, some destinations may differ from those pictured in this advertisement, as the cruise now mainly takes place around St. Bumley. Blumley! That's our favorite vacation spot! <laughs> Just imagine being in a cruise ship parked out of some shithole like that all the time. Thanks for joining us for part three. We've been teasing you about our new feature all night, and now the wait is finally over. I can reveal that every night on the show, we'll be treated to an episode of an informative and hilarious new segment called The Notice Board. It stars some top talent, and we're very excited about it. But before we see it, let's have a quick chat with the writer. I remember I skipped a bunch of audience say, claps in the beginning. Jeff Algebra, guys! Actually, I've, uh, I've got the algebra. I go by Jeff Dupoon now. <laughs> How'd you like that? Well, yeah. It's a so huge fancy. transformation for him. Name now that you're a successful artist. Well, exactly. I'm earning enough to pay taxes now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and how does Angela feel about all this? <laughs> your, uh, your wife. Ah! <laughs> oh, God, no. No? <laughs> no, she's long gone. No, she was holding me back. I'm with Norm now. We were married last month. <laughs> Norm de Plume. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> what did you A reaction. Mm, what was your inspiration? Wait, which one is Norm? Is that that guy that was part of the skit, too? Offering me 25 grand to write a pro team sitcom. And I heard my father's voice. It said, Jeff, you listen here, boy. You make hay while the sun shines. You ring every penny you can get out of this. So I wheeled him down to the transition centre, got out my typewriter and started clacking. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and without further ado, let's give it up for the notice board. Yeah, this is where I should have had, like, 
you know, audience clapping right now. Just this awkward silence. The acting in this is Good so morning, bad. Miss Craven. Oh, morning, Ray. Everything all right, Mrs. Craven? You look as worried as the vicar in closing time. <gasps> oh, Ray, it's those young louts. They vandalized my shop. At this part, I was picking them by yes! random. Yes! <laughs> They've written all sorts of obscene language and crude pictures, and I know it's those damn youths. <sighs> I don't know. It could be the vicar at closing time. I'm just worried. So cheesy when he looks at the camera. Productive members of the community. What if they never see the error of their ways and end up as social outcasts, such as shoplifters or bong rats? Don't worry, <laughs> Mrs. Craven. This is a very supportive community, and I'm sure that in time. They will fit into this society like this key into this lock. <laughs> oh my gosh. Still more propaganda. <laughs> See? I think we could probably skip the rest Works of this because like we got the deal about the algebra guy coming being kind of a biker but really he's there to help the youths and it's more just promoting working with the government and all that let's see it's almost done wait this might have been when the earthquake happened if i remember right groundbreaking episode of the notice board but yeah. uh, we are receiving some breaking news um, I'm being told we are picking up reports from across the continent of what appear to be oh God, um, what appear to be nuclear explosions in four major foreign cities that's crazy initial estimates put the death toll into uh, they put them into millions I'm, I'm being told we're experiencing um, some power shortages as a result, so apologies, apologies for the interruption. And apparently we can go live now to team headquarters for an emergency broadcast from Prime Minister Julia Salisbury um, any moment. Yes, yes, let's go to that now. Good evening, citizens and leaders of the world. Minutes ago, operatives working for Advance detonated nuclear explosives simultaneously in four major cities across the continent. Okay, so it's not in their own country. Advance did other urban detonate nukes in other cities, hesitate. though, of other countries, I believe. We are hearing stories of power fluctuations and what could be minor earthquakes uh, throughout the continent. Stand by. That's crazy. We've lost contact with our benefactors in Urkistan and Konislava, while our equipment seems to be resetting. Um... That's one thing we all hope we, we never have to see in our lifetimes. It's like some kind of nuclear war. I need this verified. Because then we're all goners if it gets to a big enough scale. I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you are receiving this, but if you are, then you have to know. You have to know what's being but. done. What's being done right now to our neighbors. This is unprecedented. Our government has committed an act, multiple acts of mass destruction in our name. Because of the blockades or sanctions? Nor do I care how you voted. You didn't vote for this. None of us did. They, we, this can't be. Uh, we are uh, waiting further news and, oh, God. What if they respond? We will expect your complete acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. Thank you. 
Yeah, she just gave every other country another an ultimatum. I'm curious to see what the rest I, of that speech said. I don't said. talk about my personal life in my job. It's not relevant or important. Um, so many of you may be surprised to learn that I have a brother. His name is David. And right now I... I can't get a stupid face out of my head. He's a researcher and he's currently traveling the continent for work. And I don't. And is our daughter going to be okay? I don't know where he is right now. And I should imagine that there are many of you sitting at home tonight digesting this, this news. And you also have loved ones on the continent. In Erkistan, or Harvia, or San Palmarino, or, or Konislava, which I'm is where David was fake. when I last spoke to him three days ago. So when I tell you I know how you are feeling tonight, believe me, I do. But I also know that there's, there's a flow to events. I see it every day here. I know that although tonight it feels like we may be in a time of fear and darkness, we may actually be at the break of a new dawn. We don't know that yet. We can't know that yet. But together we will find out. And I will be here every night feeling what you are feeling and with your help, maybe we can all get to that brave new world. Sounds like she's still rooting for her government. My name's Megan Wolf. Or just doing that out of Let's make tomorrow better. Pure necessity at this point. And we're out. Okay, what was the final commercial I played here? This is the poor woman that's fallen apart <laughs> after the skin treatment and the hair treatment. What the hell could they be selling her now? <laughs> oh my gosh, poor monster. Is it like a perfume? Love it. I don't know what that means. I guess it's meaningful. I think it is a perfume. I don't know what that means. The dangerous new fragrance from Eye of the Beholder. Formulated with all natural hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide? Isn't that just like more oh, acid? Hey, welcome because back, Alex. I need to know what that actual um, perfume stands for. Let me see if I can Google that real quick. Oh, I need the name. There we go. Let me just Google this real quick. I know, man. She is falling apart. Say B O U I N. Hmm. Oh, it's a baboon. <laughs> okay, I think it's a baboon. So it's trying to make you smell like a. Like an ape, allegedly. I know, and now she's gonna stink. At first I was thinking, are they gonna try to make her stink like that city they had interviews at in the last stream where the whole place just ranked? But no, we'll go with the monkey, that works too. So I think that was it. So now I'm really excited to see uh, the rushes because we missed a whole lot of stuff here. So, Julia's team have asked me to ask you to keep it light. What does that mean? It means to do that thing you do where you turn politicians into humans. <laughs> Just don't get drawn into talking about the war or politics in general, really. They do know this is the news, don't they? You didn't hear this from me, but... Oh. Apparently, there's a crew at Team HQ right now. 
I think she's giving a speech or something tonight. They'll get it on the late news. Oh, great. So they get the brains and we get the performing monkey. Sometimes you sound just like him, you know. How are you? Oh. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, they were close. I miss him too, you know. Ten seconds, everybody. Rumpled old sod. Don't. Going in five, four, three. Yeah, I like how they, uh, it seems like the very beginning one is always, there's nothing to fast forward through. It just gives you the nice intro. The, the rest of them, you have to kind of jump around a little bit to make sure you get the good stuff. Oh yeah, this Clements one, we missed a lot of this. Because we got to watch a lot of the, um, uh, was it Alan? Uh, but first this evening, with the you know, war the about to guy. enter its 21st punishing week, and people hurting it up really and down is, the country, Alex, yeah. I'll be grilling unpredictable Prime Minister Peter Clement in an exclusive interview from his home. Christ, in this That's piece coming of shit. Tonight's Bug it up, man. Why is it so hard to turn the fucking way out? Go! I think these bikes break, and fuck. <laughs> It's a su up in your phone surprisingly is, good I acting, said, Alex. There's nothing wrong with the bike. Well, could you get someone to look at it, please, before I look like a complete prick on the national nightly news? There's no time. You're live in 30 seconds. Put your earpiece in for fuck's sake! <laughs> Christ, it's like lose bloody things. It's like losing my virginity all over again. Right. <laughs> That's it. How long have we got? 10 seconds. What? Stop peddling Peter. What? Oh. Okay, I want to get back and see what they were saying on this end, too. We Ed missed this portion. Back. Um, might want to put your grill back in the box. What do you mean? Your questions, advance approved. Are you joking? They write the questions now, too. It's wartime. They've got greater power. You know that. Besides... Besides what? Well, is he? I don't think it's... That'd be a terrible thing. to have to work at a yeah, news station like that where stuff. you're not really I'm doing undaunted. news at all. Impervious to daunts, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds. Well, I'm not sticking to these, but I'll play nice if he will. I can live with that. Going in five, four, three... Yeah, she says she's not going to stick to them, so she's definitely being more and more like Jeremy. In part two, I'm a little overexcited to announce. I'll be interviewing the one <laughs> and only Lil C. And later, we've got a new feature that's sure to keep you coming back for more. Yeah, so I missed but a lot of tonight, this. Let's check in with Prime Minister Peter Clement, who's speaking to us from his home one. in Lanfordshire. Good evening, Look. Prime Minister. Have we caught you exercising? Oh, have we started? Yes, that's right, Miss Wolf. I'm just a few minor adjustments. I mean, nothing drastic. It's working I'm out with a glass of scotch. As my old man used to say, just because she won't take it up the shit, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try for a quick fiddle up the car. Language, park. Prime Minister. What? Quick fiddle? What, what's wrong? Oh, shitter. It's shitter, isn't it? Yep, that's the one. Goes to say it two more times. Can you tell us what brought about this new you? Well, you know, Mrs. C and I were watching, you know, the night the blockade began, when Jeremy Donaldson. Well, you know, and it was blistering hot, as I'm sure you all remember. And I, I were a bit wheezy from all the cigars and all that. And Mrs. C turns to me after, you know, after the signal dropped away, you, and she were in floods of tears. And she says, PZ, she says, I could go on without you, she said. So I made a decision. And since that day, I have stopped smoking cigars. Mm. Except for Christmas. My birthdays, weddings, state dinners. I swear I say, I can't as useless Rudy Black which does a guy anywhere. <laughs> and apparently, I'm going on a walking holiday this Christmas, and that should finish me off for bloody good. Did you make the decision to holiday within the country this winter because of the blockade, Prime Minister? Well, Mrs C has never liked travelling at the best of times. <laughs> uh, these are certainly not the best of times. On that, we can all agree. Uh, there's a lot Seriously. of red tape involved in leaving the territory at the moment, as I'm sure you're all aware. Some of those farms are bastard long. All in it together. What? All in it 
together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he could also, care less. He could care less. It doesn't seem very advanced to be going abroad when the rest of the country is grounded. And yet, Julia Salisbury announced today that she'll be visiting Svenland during this year's winter break. Is that really an example of team spirit? What? Did you know about this, Gail? No one tells me anything, Peter. You should know that. <laughs> hey, what Michael. Going? What's up, well, dude? Well, leaving that for a moment, it says on this card that a body like yours must take some planning to achieve. What's your morning routine? Oh, my gosh. Well, I have a <laughs> frigid morning routine. Rigid? It's rigid for fuck's sake! Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, a rigid and demanding <laughs> plan that my doctor and personal trainer... <laughs> Who's your personal trainer? Ah, oh, some prick called Clark. Is that oh, all Michael, you you're going to see soon. It gets Prime crazy. Minister, speaking of We're just going to rewatch it some things to get more details. With the blockade 20th week and the people of this country reeling from its effects, what plans do you have to get us out of this mess? Essentially, they're at almost well, war right now. a very blunt question, Miss Surely Wolf. one for which you, the democratically elected Prime Minister, must have an answer. Don't you get smart with me, Pat. I was a fucking national treasure before you Whoa. were a twinkle in the milkman's scrotum. You want to talk about plans? Let me tell you about plans. That's all we do. Fucking plans and revised plans and then meetings to discuss okay. the implementation of plans. And plans and yet more planning for fucking plans and yet more fucking plans. Well, that's good. That's good to know, Plan. you know, I used to really like you, Pat. You were a breath of fresh air. But I've been watching you. And you know what? You get more like him every day. I will take that as a compliment. Yeah, she is changing. Prime Minister, later on this evening, your co-leader, Julia Salisbury, is going to give a national address <laughs> from team headquarters. Can you Millions. give us a hint of what she's going to say? Um, yes. Well, uh, I imagine that there sorry, will be sorry, you the usual... Up no, what, what, I, mean, what do, I mean is... You do know about this broadcast, don't you, Prime Minister? Well, I, I'm, I'm sure I did. Um, but Julia and I have no secrets from each other. We don't memorise each other's bloody diaries either. As me old mum used to say, if you wanted to get a job done quick, don't get bogged down in the pubes. What else you got? Sorry? Only cards. What else? A little piece of my life you want to rustle through. Get out. Refill my last. It really sounds kind of drunk. Oh, come on. Uh, come on. OK. What music do you listen to when you work out? Well, Gail tells me that I work out to Little C, <laughs> but I have absolutely no fucking idea who that is. Oh, fuck's sake. Do you think the C stands for... It stands for collaborative, Prime Minister. Yeah, actually, that, that does make more sense. Yeah, it's just an advertisement, because that's who they have uh, on their musical how's guest. How's rationing affecting that's you? That's funny. Todd? But we get by, you just have to learn to get by on the basics. Take comfort in each other. I've got Mrs. C and many a fine single malt. We've I seen part of this, but it does jump back into stuff we had to cut out, and I'm not Except sure when. Decent night's sleep, of course. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. When we come back, oh, well. it's time for the culture spot. Well, that was a we'll fucking ambush. Get on that phone now, right now, to that, find out what that duplicitous bitch is up to. Whoa. And get me a bottle of something stronger. This fucking government stuff is complete fucking bog water. So, yeah. And now, I, let me take a little break. So, Michael, essentially what's happened is, you know, this country doing all this crazy stuff they're doing, they've been basically sanctioned and blockaded from other countries. And uh, during our broadcasts, the whole place started shaking. Power was going out. Being from California, I assumed that, you know, it was an earthquake. No, our government basically had planted nukes in a bunch of other neighboring countries and detonated, I think, four of them all at once and then threatened that they were had more ready to go at any moment. So they're basically holding all these other countries hostage. It is crazy. One minute back, everybody. And that is what happens when you wander from the car. I don't think he knew about her statement. I don't think anyone's supposed to know. When you mentioned it, Bozeman's face turned a color that I think you call embolism. A mind trouble. Bozeman? <laughs> nah, you're like the daughter he never had. Mm. I suppose the higher-ups might fire him, though. Who's Lil C? Or if there's any justice, me. Who's Lil C? Are you winding me up? 
what I'm civilized. I read books. <laughs> How would I know? Yeah, it's getting crazy, Michael. Okay, and then this is the musical guest. I'm not sure what we missed here. We could probably fast forward through most of this. There's probably a little bit here in the beginning and end we missed. Yeah, it's escalating very quickly. I've never heard of her before. Oh, she's big, really big. Really? Yeah. she any good? Nah, of course not. She talks shit. Oh. But kids go mad for her, absolutely <laughs> No, Five no, and ten seconds. Not. Hang on, Colin, you've got kids. Yeah, I've got about six or seven, I think. What? Five, four, three. <laughs> he like doesn't even know how many kids Thanks he for has. Coming back. Later, we have an exciting new feature that we just know you're going to love. So stay tuned for that. But first, I'm really excited for our next guest. She rose to prominence as the delight. Okay, we can skip most of this. Really just talking about her new song. And it's, it's actually kind of enlightening. Like she doesn't care what she says at this point. She's just like, I'm invincible. They can't touch me. I'm just going to tell it like it is. So when she's actually performing, a new track, these babies going to bring you home. Take it away. Ladies all the songs are so naughty. Title. It's the force's favorite. Oh, you know what? I think all the cameras are on her. So there's probably not much to see during this section. There might be some at the very end. Well, if that doesn't distract that you from side. the world outside, I don't know what will. <laughs> I'd like to thank Lil C for, well, for doing that. Don't go anywhere. After the break, we'll finally be revealing the new se segment of our show. That's going to me. Know you're going to love. We'll be back right after this. And we're out. I love their reactions. I know. What can I just say? The guy was saying, oh, what does the C stand for? Is it for little And then uh, she said, no, it's, I think it was collaboration or something. Thank you so much for letting me do this. It really means a lot to me, you know, yeah. to be able to promote myself on such a... I think we actually saw all this because we got to listen to it during the commercial break. Yeah. Okay, so we didn't need anything there. What about the notice board? Was there anything here we missed? It's a crazy system this game has to kind of manage everything. It's really neat. Well, the fact is, Jen, there weren't enough flowers in my dressing room. There were exactly 12, as it said in your rider. Do I look like the sort of person who counts things? <laughs> no, 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 not anymore. Above the world's immortality, Sandpiper? I'm not sure what you're Just referring to. How's it going, Sandpiper? Droll Shenka like with the it's raid. Let me pause this real quick. Right how is it going, Droll Shenka, and welcome Raiders to Junkadia. How was your stream, Droll? It's good to see you. No, we go into uh, some dark places in the stream, Sand Piper Birdie. I'm not sure what you were referring to. <laughs> you might be thinking of a different stream. All right, let me give you a shout out there, Droll. What were you playing today? You were working on some more Destiny 2. How is that going? I'm guessing you're working on the newest uh, season. How does that work in those games? Do you usually get to like the end of the season before it's up or is it really tough to get that far? I've never really played games that kind of did the whole season thing. My dad got really into the Diablo seasons, but I don't know if he ever maxed it out before it was like ready for the next season. You know, that's so cool, though. Glad you're still enjoying that game. Um, Andy tried it and she got kind of motion sickness playing it. We'll have to try it again sometime because I think we'd have fun playing that together. Have you played this game, um, by the way, Sandpiper? Are you familiar with it? It's a wild game. Okay, let's hear what these people are talking about before this thing starts up. Oh, is it easy to max out? That's good. That's good. Because uh, I, I would think that'd be kind of defeating to like push so hard to get to the end game and then it just resets before you're actually there. Oh, that's awesome, Sandpiper. Very cool. Yeah, that was a really, really good game. It, it kind of took some of the best parts of some really old top-down um, RPGs like Planescape Torment and some of those games and just focused completely on the story, taking out all the combat 
So it was really neat to, uh, it was kind of a combination of an RPG and like an adventure game, like a classic adventure game. Oh, absolutely, Droll. If we get into that game, we'll definitely be hitting you up. <laughs> okay, let's see what these people are talking about. Person who counts things. No, no, no. Not anymore. so full of himself I'm now. I'm better than that now. I'll tell you what. Just keep adding flowers until it feels like 12. Got it? Absolutely. Right away. 10 seconds. Oh, she hates her life. Five. Four, three. Oh, you're more into uh, open world games? What kind of um, other open world games do you play? Three. We've been teasing. Okay, let's get past this part. I actually just finished playing um, Elden Ring, another open world game. I really like that game. Okay, so when we were in this play, we weren't missing anything because all the cameras were focused on them. Yeah, so for everyone not familiar, during this section of the game, we've already recorded our broadcast, but this allows us to go back and see if any of the cameras caught things that we weren't watching during the broadcast, that we can kind of get some behind the scenes details of things we missed. Okay, and then there was the very final part of our broadcast. I can't even scroll down, there it is. Oh, nice, I've played all of those fantastic games. A lot of people didn't like Cyberpunk, of all the bugs, but I played on PC. I didn't have any Sorry problems. Sorry to interrupt the first I thought it was groundbreaking great. episode of the Notice Board, but uh, we are receiving some breaking news. You mute some of these, it gets really um, loud. I'm being told. There we go. We are picking up reports from across the continent of what appear to be. Oh God. That's right. So. Uh, what appear to be nuclear explosions in. Four major foreign cities. In the story in this game, their Initial country, which is really corrupt right now, nuked four other countries around them. They put them into millions. I'm, I'm being told we're experiencing um, some power shortages I as a result. I so probably changes. beat that boss in like four or five tries, Michael, if I had and to guess. Apparently we can go it was tough. Live now to team headquarters for an emergency broadcast from Prime Minister Julia Salisbury. Um, any oh, moment. yeah, we missed a lot yes. of this. Yes, let's go to that now. So essentially... Sandpiper, the, the object of this game is you are kind of like a news broadcaster in the booth, controlling all the cameras. You have to bleep out swears. You have to be sure you're focusing on the people talking, run commercials at the right time, and just kind of make sure everything's working properly. But in the background story of this game, there's this corrupt government that just took over, and they're kind of feeding you information, saying, we need you to make sure this is broadcasted on the news. Don't share this kind of thing. And it gets real shady and kind of gray areas, what you should really be doing or not. So I'm kind of choosing to not trust the government and go against what they're saying and focus on the, this other group that's trying to broadcast what's really happening in the news, which is interesting. It hurts your pay. It hurts your moving up in the company, which actually hurts your personal life. There's also a story that talks about what happens with your family because you have money and you're trying to take care of your elderly mom who's sick and all kinds of stuff. There's a lot more to this game. But uh, what just happened in this game is this corrupt country, which was getting sanctioned and blockaded off by other countries because of how they're acting. A little too close to home, right? Um, they just nuked a bunch of other countries. So we're going to see how that turned out. This is them doing their broadcast, announcing what they're actually doing right now. <laughs> yeah, Alex Jones. There it is. Oh, you get some rest, Joel Shanka. I totally get that. Have a good time, and thank you so much for the lurk. Good evening, citizens and leaders of the world. Here we go. Minutes ago, operatives working for Advance detonated nuclear explosives simultaneously in four major cities across the continent. Or should I do both we at the same time, Alex? have similar devices in 58 other urban centers and will not hesitate to detonate them if our conditions are not met in full and without delay. The people of our territory will no longer tolerate your illegal and genocidal blockade. You are to remove it immediately. We will accept nothing less than your unconditional surrender. Your territories will be taken under our control. We will install replacement governments to ensure that your citizens become part of the new future. Wow. Your borders are now our borders. Your people are our people. 
they will finally be fed and clothed and educated and healed. But They're probably doing just fine. For your privileged few, the moment that they feared is now upon them. Allow me to be crystal clear. If you fire a single shot at our territory or harm a single one of our citizens, we will not hesitate to detonate further devices. Oh, man. You will not find them. Though no doubt you are already searching for them. Our technology is decades ahead of yours. We will expect your complete acceptance of our terms by midnight tonight. Thank you. Jeez. And then she talks, we got to see this, but she talks about talk having about a brother life in my job. who might be in one of those places that was blown up. And our daughter was also traveling or with like a, a vacation program. So we don't know if our daughter is even alive after that. Maybe we shouldn't have sent her on that trip. Okay, I want to see after we cut the broadcast if she had anything else to say. That's where we we're ringing around, but the telephone networks are overloaded. Okay, we'll find him. I think we, we saw know this. Exactly, exactly which cities were hit, or Megan. Megan, we will find him. <sighs> yeah. So while we're doing this, um, Sandpiper, th there's the this group called Distrust, which is essentially the anti-government group that's trying to hack our broadcast. And I'm letting them do it. Every time they try to hack, I make sure I focus the broadcast to catch what they're trying to broadcast so that some of the truth gets out there in the news versus just trying to, you know, spit out the propaganda that the government wants. So it's now I feel even better about that choice now that they're holding the entire world hostage. Of course, it's probably going to hurt our family. Oh, disrupt. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's going to hurt our family doing that. But sometimes you got to make some sacrifices, right? Okay, so that was that. Let's check out the uh, the advert. I, we don't have to watch the disrupt hacks because we actually already got to see those, but we didn't get to see all the commercials. <laughs> they have some really goofy commercials in this game. Here we go. Crazy pre-Christmas. This is that wild salesman guy. What does his Christmas sale look like? Hi, it's Neil here with a pre-Christmas crazy Christmas deal. What the hell it's is he wearing? It doesn't look Christmassy. Pull a cracker, it'll go bang in your face, and you'll take whatever comes out. Yay! Christmas pineapple on a tree. Take two bottles, take three. We don't care how many bottles. Take a candle, set fire to your Christmas tree. Set fire to your life if you're thinking Christmas is a way off. I almost did that when I was a kid. Dogs, you say? Okay, I could, I could be down for this place. Oh my goodness. Are just for Christmas to eat. That was ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Neil is complete. Complete psycho, Michael. And imagine how Megan feels. She supported them. Her co host and friend Jeremy dies because he saw what was going on. And now she's partly to blame for her brother's possible death. She's got it. And she's, she was already turning around before that moment. Now I think she's going to be practically completely on Jeremy's side, is my guess, after this. Um. We saw the survival box, the cruise, and that one. I don't think we saw this one. Here's more propaganda. 
This is what the uh, government would have wanted me to play as a commercial. The enemy is all around us. A frightened world that looks at what we have achieved Jada. and dares not Jada. let it succeed. They have tried to starve us, but as a team, we have grown food enough for all. They have tried to hurt us to cut off our medicines, but as a team, we have offered radical, compassionate solutions. And they have tried to scare us, to rob us of power and leave us in the dark. But as a team, we have lit a fire so bright that they will never quench it. We are at war with a brutal foreign enemy, against leaders who do not even treat their own people with the dignity and love that we have come to expect as standard. Oh man. And if these leaders can sit idly by while their own people starve, well, whatever would they do to us should we lose? That is why it is vital that we pull together, that we encourage and educate our family, friends and neighbors so that they too embrace this new future because the team can only succeed when it pulls in the same direction. And while we certainly wouldn't call dissenting voices treasonous, <laughs> we would not. an eyebrow at those who can't find it within themselves to show even a little team spirit. Advance. Yeah, you don't have to think like Together, us, but if you don't, lose this war. we're going to be watching you. <laughs> so join the winning team. Oh, it's totally lame, Jada. It's totally fake BS. Absolutely. It's scary how realistic that is to things going on right now, right, Michael? Ugh. Okay, so now on to the next chapter. Yeah, so that, that was the government trying to say, like, hey, everybody else in the world, bad. We're good. Like, they're terrible to their people. We love you guys. Do what we say and you'll be fine. <laughs> Don't listen to anything else. Oh, it's so scary. What's crazy is this game didn't come out this year. Like, it makes complete sense with everything going on in the world right now. It was just a little too prophetic coming out like a couple of years ago whenever it came out. Oh, I'm doing really good, Jada. How are you? It's really warm today. Very true, Alex. We definitely don't want that to happen. That could be like end of the world scenario, right? Okay. Now, unfortunately, this is back to our regular life. We are in worrying debt right now. We're not doing good money-wise. I spent a lot of money to keep our grandma out of the government, like, elderly facilities because I don't trust the government now, which I think is the right choice, but now we're suffering for money. Okay, a proportionate response. The rest of your shift passes in a blur, with the same words going around and around in your head. Operatives working for advanced detonated nuclear explosives. Initial estimates put the death toll in the millions. Did this just really happen? It's, it's just so scarily true, Alex. You know, it's... Ah, oh, I hate to see it. And what's funny is, I mean, this isn't like just new. It's been going on forever with so many countries over the years, you know? I mean, every, every country's been usually guilty of this at some point during their uh, their terms. I mean, heck, in the US, we do it on both sides. You have one news channel that tries to, you know, push out their propaganda, and another one that is just, luckily in non-war times, it's not as intense, but when things hit the fan like that, it gets even more and more controlling. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a smart idea, Michael. Always, always question, always question. Okay, so you pull into the driveway, with no memory of the journey home. The light in the front room is on. Clearly someone else is still awake. The door creaks open into the living room, and you find Sam sitting on the sofa, staring at the TV. The screen is off, and they're clearly lost in thought. You take a seat behind, beside them and, reassure, and a reassuring hand on their shoulder. They don't look at you, but they do reach up to take your hand in theirs. Now you're closer. You can see the tears flowing freely down Sam's face. Our little girl. Yeah, because we sent her on vacation. I know. It's... I don't know what to do. What the hell can we do? The bastards killed Susie and millions of others, all because of their war, which we never asked for. Behind the tears, you see a fire. Raw fury you've never seen in Sam before. I hate them, Alex. I know you've always supported Advance, but after this, they're monsters. I need to know you understand that, that we're not going to help them anymore. Oh yeah, I'm 100% on board with that. Oh my gosh. 
Okay, we can say Advance did what was necessary. I'm glad they were prepared to do what was needed to protect us all. Nope. Nope. Um, I don't think it's that simple. The country is suffering. This war has to end. Nope. Nothing can justify what they did. And anyone who tries is just as bad as they are. I'm going to go with that. There's nothing to justify killing millions of civilians like that. Relief spreads over Sam's face like a wave, and they collapse against you, clutching tightly. Clearly this was weighing heavily on them. You're not sure you've even processed it all fully yet, but at least you'll get through it together. Yeah, I bet if we made some other decisions, Sam might have just left us right then. <laughs> Alex, in a weird way, the way our news stations are in the US, we kind of kind of have two different types of news and they're both telling each other instead of like one you know general news that everybody hears saying we're right they're wrong both of these sites are always fighting against each other saying we're right they're wrong we're right they're wrong the truth is generally somewhere in the middle you know just hard to really discern what that is uh the last week has passed in a blur a rush of things to do but all immediately forgotten your memory clouded in the dark fog Nine days since the so-called Liberation Night and the beginning of Advance's new future. So did all the other countries succumb, I'm guessing? You weren't the first ones at the church today. You were staggered by the number of people who have come to mourn with you. Everyone here for the same reason, sharing, their pain, sharing the same pain, the same sense of loss. It's written over all their faces, much as it would be on yours. You step away from everyone, needing space to gather your thoughts. Your daughter, poor little Susie, gone. I was hoping there'd be a chance that she survived. Maybe she was like out a little bit because she was traveling and stuff, but no. She was like dead smack in the middle of that city. Sam has said little since that evening. They're still getting over the shock. But when you walk over and squeeze their hand, they squeeze back tightly. You'll get through this together. You can only imagine how awful it would be to face this alone. There hadn't even been a coffin to bury. I know because it's, it's, there's just way too much control, Alex. And I, same thing in like China too, where they often have so much censorship, no other news can get out unless it's like renegade news and it gets in trouble, you know? Uh, that's such a scary situation, but at least some people do recognize that and they do what they can to try to find out what's really happening. Um, an academic exodus. This is like a long time later. What was the previous day? Like 300 something? Now we're in the 700s. We just like passed like almost an entire year. It's seemingly ordinary morning, but as soon as you get into work, you find a small crowd gathered in the break room. When you go in to grab your first cup of tea of the day, you can't help but overhear some excited chatter. You didn't hear? Yeah, another one's gone missing. What's that bring the total up to now? Oh, I should think over a hundred at this point. They won't all have been reported or noticed yet. Sorry, what's going on? Yeah, what are they talking about? An excited young woman turns to you and begins to explain. Another professor went missing from Queensview University. With all the other disappearances over the last year, scientists, doctors, researchers, she pauses before lowering her voice to a whisper. It's clearly disrupt targeting the people speaking out against them. I even heard Advance are struggling to prevent further. A deep, familiar voice from behind you interrupts. What exactly is going on here? Oh no. A silence overtakes the room as you all turn in unison towards the doorway. Bozeman clears his voice before continuing. He's kind of like um, the head of the news station. I've told you before, I don't want to hear about these so-called disappearances. Come on now, people. Advance has been very clear that they there's nothing to worry about. Uh, which means they're not our problem. And unless they start classing cappuccinos as intellectual, I don't think anyone here has anything to worry about. Let's get back to work. Bozeman holds up a hand to keep you as everyone else files out of the room. Uh-oh, they want to talk to us? Look, I know you have a habit of doing what you want, but things are different now. Advance runs the show, and they've made their feelings clear, so now I'm doing the same. Channel 1's official position is that the government has things well in hand. Nothing more, nothing less. I trust I won't be hearing talk about this again. He gives you a curt nod before leaving. It seems that, for better or for worse, public ownership is now in full swing. Ah, now it's going to be so hard to produce any real news, right? 
I wonder if Megan's even part of the broadcast anymore. Two, three, four, five, five, six months later? A career in the making. Oh, have we been doing pretty good? What's going on here? You run your finger... Oh, excuse me, trying to talk and drink at the same time. You run your fingers on the steering wheel impatiently as you wait for Charlie again. It's great he's enjoying the Cohesion Cadets. Uh, that's that advanced kind of the government run Boy Scouts club. And is so enthusiastic. But does he really need to stay behind every week to help? It's your Saturday evening too, after all. Finally, you see him exit the hall, a grin on his face. Oh no, Michael. It didn't happen this stream, but at the very end of the last stream, uh, he shot himself. Jeremy was kind of, he, he had uh, given us a tape to play, which is all uh, disrupt anti-government stuff. And he knew he was in big trouble after doing that. So he grabbed a security guy, guard's gun and was basically trying to explain everything that was going on to the public. And at the very end, he offed himself. It was brutal. You can't help but smile back. The frustration starting to fade as you see him so genuinely happy. After hugging his friends goodbye, Charlie heads over to the car and gets in, his face flush with excitement. So how was... You're interrupted as he can't contain himself any longer. Guess what? Let's say, uh, what? We'll play along with a smile. So obviously the Cohesion Cadets is a starting point for becoming a CCO. That's basically the government police. So we get a head start when applying for that. Charlie gushes, clearly keen on explaining his news, almost tripping over the words in his efforts to tell you. Well, apparently, from next year, the top 5% of cadets will be taken into a special program to become CCMs, Community Cohesion Managers. And guess who's going to be in it? He beams at you. Uh... Okay, now we, we can't just go along with this. I see. And what exactly do these community cohesion managers do? Oh, well, basically, they need a new li 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 liaison, I hate that word, uh, team between regular people, the CCOs, and the Betterment Department. And that'll be us. People who come to us with concerns and we'll decide whether they need referrals, and if so, to which department. Cool, right? So you're going to be helping people report on their friends and neighbors? Well, yeah, I guess, but only bad people. It's about helping the community, making it safer for everyone. Charlie frowns at you. You don't like the CCOs or the Betterment teams? Let's say, uh, I'm just worried about them having that much power and turning people against each other. You're starting to sound like the people that Advance are trying to help. Charlie looks at you, a serious expression on his face. He's going to rat us out. Don't worry, I'll make sure that everyone gets the support they need. This is a good thing for the community, and the team will be able to help everyone. He nods to himself and sits back in his seat. The mood in the car is somewhat icy for the rest of the journey home. You hope it's not a sign of where things are going. You know, at first he wasn't really pro-government, but then we sent him to that cadet group, which at the time we didn't really know how... I guess, uh, much that we're going to brainwash our child, and now he's totally pro-government. But no, actually, I don't know if our son had much of a problem. Our daughter was always very anti-government. I think she was actually kind of part of Disruptor, like, uh, she was caught tagging stuff, I believe, with that, like, fist icon. Oh no. I'm scared how far it's going to go forward. <laughs> Time has no meaning anymore. A spark to light the flames. You're surprised to find Sam in bed next to you when you wake up. They must have uh, got in very late last night from drinks with the folks from school. You decide to let them sleep in and enjoy the lazy Sunday morning. With the house quiet, you decide to bring some breakfast into the living room and watch some TV while you eat. This is breaking news. Reports are coming in from across the country that large swaths of farmland went up in flames last night as part of what authorities are calling a heinous and well-planned act of terrorism by the group known as Disrupt. You drop your spoon back into the porridge and turn up the volume. In addition to food stores, which government sources have said will put a strain on universal menu centers worldwide or countrywide, a number of CCO and civic buildings were targeted in last night's attack. 
According to Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, specific prisons and re-education and betterment facilities were raided, and a small selection of problematic and potentially dangerous individuals were forcibly extracted in, uh, from lawful custody. I wonder if we put our grandma in one of those uh, homes, if she would have been hurt or something. You hold your breath, waiting to hear if anyone got hurt. Unfortunately, it appears that the CCOs were ill-prepared for an event like this, and Disrupt seemed much more effective and well-organized in comparison. While most of the targeted locations were thankfully empty of people, given the lateness of the hour, the Betterment Centers were fully staffed when they came under attack. 17 CCOs and four administrative staffs lost their lives as a result of the brutal actions of Disrupt last night, with countless more injured, many seriously rushed to the hospital. A few Disrupt members were captured during the conflicts, but a vast majority seem to have evaded capture so far. More on this story as it develops. You go to turn off the TV. Oh yeah, it was that was actually after what I was just talking about, Michael. We uh, spent a lot of money to keep our mom at home. So we had to get a at-home nurse, you know? I wanted to keep her out of those government facilities. You're interrupted by Charlie, walking into the living room, bleary-eyed with a piece of toast. Anything interesting going on? He gestures to the TV. Mutely, you leave the news on as they cycle through the story again. Charlie watches in hushed silence. By the end of the broadcast, they're dubbing it the Night of Fire. Everything's going to be okay, right? Say, well, I hope so. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Who knows? 900. We're definitely going to be in the thousands before this game ends, I think. Okay, so based on the time, I think we'll have time to finish this chapter, but maybe not do all the reviews afterwards. We might save that for the next stream. Which might be a good idea because it helps, you know, catch you up on what you might have missed. The uprising. Oh, now uh, we're going to do some damage. A year and a half since Liberation Night. Oh, we have a walkie-talkie. Come in, Alex. This is Alan James. The revolution starts tonight, Alex, and we need your help. Whoa. Throughout this broadcast, we're going to ask you to do things that will directly help with this mass protest. I'll be talking to you regularly tonight, and I'll also be hacking in when I can. Please help get our message out. We're on the verge, Alex. You've always been fair and balanced in your approach to us. With your help... We can tip the balance in our favor. If you play our tape at the second break, that's when we think it will have the most impact. It's on your right. Okay, second break. Um, it's going to be this tape. Oh, power, that's right. I always forget to turn on power. So we want to put theirs. Yeah, that was Disrupt talking. So we want to put theirs in the second one. I am perfectly capable of messing up my own love life. The joy of privilege. And I have to watch this woman continue to melt. So we'll watch that one. I can help you. I'm an expert at romance. Ask my ex-wives. Please don't say brother. I don't know if you're an expert if you have ex-wives. You're not this type, babe. Too short. Too smart. Going in five, four... Three. To the newsroom for tonight's National Nightly News. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News, broadcasting across the territories. My name is Megan Wolf. Our top stories tonight: Ashes to Ashes. It's been 40 days since disruption yeah, time for pictures. attacks across the territories. The coordinated action, dubbed the Night of Fire by commentators, was seen as an attempt to subvert the supply chain, but there may have been more to it. While emergency services were all kept busy at the agricultural centres. It seems a series of covert attacks was carried out, including the freeing of political prisoners and, sources say, several assassination attempts. The Department of Betterment had Man, declined to comment. Man, crazy. Food glorious food. With the last of the menu centers opening in territories 5, 8, and 14 today, Advance confirmed that the program is now in full operation, providing free food for every citizen of the new future. What Four. started as rationing during the 20-week war has blossomed into a social contract that is the envy of the unawakened world. Jack Tractor Pants, spokesman for the menu centers, <laughs> Tractor said today pants? that while they can guarantee the contents of every box is nutritious, the actual quality of the meals you cook depends on whether you have a touch of Chef Jordan Rankley or the culinary skills of a professional footballer. 
If I were a rich man, problems in territories 11, 17 and 22 today as striking bosses attempted to undermine their new economy. There's some fireworks With go off. With seemingly no awareness of irony, the former CEOs and MDs have come together to form the Wealth Creators Union. With demands including a return to 150% bonuses, private jets and mandatory groveling zones. <laughs> In an Probably annoying show of petulance, the former elites drove their luxury vehicles at 10 miles per hour up and down the motorways of their respective territories. The coordinated protest of elites inconvenienced several hundred thousand of their employees. Some fun now. Signs Rude. of ever more resistance to advances radical policies today as popular resistance movement disrupt extended their reach further across the territories. The organization's oh, panda. emblem appeared in every major city across the territory. We're going to show the panda. A well-coordinated publicity stunt, which has seen them dominate the headlines. While it's beyond debate that Disrupt's membership is growing at a rapid pace, not everyone seems to be as energetic about it as spokesperson Alan James would have us believe. Especially not this resident of Gottingberg Zoo in Territory 6, who seems Aww. remarkably unenthused about global politics. <laughs> I just, I just want a nap. The stories we've been reporting on reached their revelatory conclusions today. Firstly, drive a flawed bargain. Capitalizing on the, the global same picture. success of Die Flawed the movie, transformative CEO Sophia Remington today Isn't welcomed it? followers to the first United Church of Flawed. Sophia, who quit her role as CEO of Remington's Fist to take up the role of High Flawed Mistress, said the idea hmm. came to her in a vision, saying, I was elbow deep in blunderclatch when I felt something unexpectedly flawed. A surprising ending there for Sophia Remington after a turbulent two and a half years running the company. Fun guy. Unexpected news today as two familiar scientists Same picture. announced the birth of an extraordinary child. The underground struggle of doctors David Wong was that? and Beeping Ingrid Forsborg and Horgan's Ward captured the hearts of people around the world. And after an arduous return voyage, which took over a year, the couple say they've never been happier. Baby Dante is said to be healthy, if a bit partial to the air in cupboard. Man United, the happily ever after for Johnny Hamsleeves and partner and former teammate. <laughs> we have no control over this anymore. Finally tied the knot this week. Speaking as the pair headed off for their honeymoon in Territory 15, Johnny acknowledged that there would be many in the football world who wouldn't accept his choice of partner. I think it's time people grew up, he said. Some people that, uh, get over it. Priest is kind of creeping me out. that, plus we'll be taking a trip to Dangley Parks for the notice board, as well as getting a sneak peek at the hottest ticket in town. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Man, the timing of that thing. It's so sad not seeing Jeremy on that like highlight reel in the beginning. Oh wait, we should we need to be following this. Always ask the same question. How can I help? Well, this is how. And as for when, you'll know. Keep watching. I didn't realize that they had uh, done that. Whoops. But first, 500 days after the loss of a fine leader and a great man. The start of tonight's program is dedicated to remembering and celebrating the life of Peter Clement. Patrick Bannon is Wait, live what? from Parliament Park, where Julia Salisbury will be breaking ground on what will soon be a memorial garden in Peter's honour. Clement died? Patrick. Lying through her teeth about missing that poor uh, bastard. Patrick. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're live. Things were better with Peter, weren't they? Patrick. They were, and I don't mind saying it. They were, because he held her back. But now, now there's no stopping Hello, her. Hello, Patrick. We're oh, live. Of course, can't say that, can I, Francis? No, no, oh, no. They want me to bleep that stuff out, but I'm not going to. Honest, if you can't say anything Patrick. these days. Oh, she's lost it, mate. She's completely off the rocker. I heard from an aide that... Hello, Megan. You join me here live from the what? <laughs> Whoops. Oh. Uh, uh. Nice. Live to that groundbreaking ceremony just as soon as we can get Patrick back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me just say, I think the memorial gardens are going to be gorgeous. I've had a sneak peek. Oh, I lost some ratings there. Anna Marsh has done a fabulous job. Oh, okay. All right. It seems like we have got the signal back. We can now go live to Patrick Bannon in Parliament Park. Patrick. Thank you, Megan. I'm Patrick Bannon. No, you're not. And <laughs> We are indeed live here. <laughs> what is going on? Apologies for the technical difficulties there. I think they upgraded it, Michael, now, yeah. Julia Salisbury will step out on stage 
And Behind these buttons you. are new too. The boys in editing have just informed me that the eulogy footage isn't fully cut together yet. You're going to have to do it on the fly. For goodness sake, make sure you make them look good. Slowly gathering since this afternoon. This is Alan. You can undermine them here and help us win hearts and minds. Make him look bad, Alex. Really bad. Oh yeah. And it seems like the ceremony is getting I'm good at making things look bad. Here is Prime Minister Julius Salisbury, the picture of elegance to begin her address. Good evening, fellow teammates and friends. So what am I editing together? 500 days ago, all of our lives changed irrevocably. Still reeling from the triumphs and tribulations of Liberation Night, another great loss befell the people of these newly united territories. The loss when he's of a yawning. leader, a statesman, a dear friend, and a hero. <laughs> yeah, I love the angry Peter version. Gordon Clement. Peter's death at the age of just 62, of course, announced by the team on the 24th of December, just six weeks after Liberation Night. He was a jerk. Born to a working class family on a housing estate in Rothering, Peter first trained as a carpenter before getting his start on television. First moving and building scenery and then developing into the personality that we all knew and loved so much. <laughs> I love Just all those job, flipping off. Over 25 years ago, running for 11 series, winning multiple awards, and charming audiences up and down the country. Gotta look for the worst camera angle. Peter taught us, all of us, not to be content with the way things are, not to accept inequities, no matter how small. But he also taught us what it took to fight them courage, integrity, empathy. And hard bloody graft. <laughs> Across a career spanning three decades, <laughs> Peter Clement was known for shows including Wake Up, It's Saturday, and much later, late night chat show PT, which at its peak drew millions of viewers. Peter was by no means a saint. <laughs> Trust me, he once told me he had more regrets than he'd had stolen. Oh my gosh, dinners. what are they doing? He always did have a knack for a turn of phrase. <laughs> But it speaks to the strength of his character that he chose Just to nothing but smoking, drinking, swearing, and flipping off. His faults as well as his talents. Peter had the heart to give it all, all he had for the people of these united territories. Famous for his potty mouth. It's estimated conservatively that Peter Clement uttered over one point five. Famous for his potty mouth. Words during his career. Though some sources put this figure well in excess of two million f bombs alone. I love that they even gave us this footage as like an option, as you know. He was in the weeks and months leading up to Liberation Night. He wasn't the man we love. But his eyes still twinkled with that familiar. What the hell happened to him? That spark of wit and wisdom of a life lived for others. Prime Minister Clement, of course, died from apparent liver failure after ah. suffering from the long-term effects of alcohol abuse. I mean, I would believe that. I first met Peter nearly 20 years ago. <laughs> Moments before I was supposed to give a speech. Nothing like this one, actually. <laughs> Only I'd, um, I'd spilt coffee all down myself. and I was young, nervous, desperate to be liked, and... And from behind me, I heard, Christ, pet, you've either pissed your kex or sprung a leak, but either way, you've got a problem. <laughs> and, and before I could even say a word, he stripped off his dry trousers and insisted I took them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sort of man that Peter Clement was. Kind, compassionate, sensitive. Hell of a drinker. A brilliant thinker. A natural leader. But mostly... A good man. Always very angry. This glorious for our so beautiful and new. This shining beacon of Thank you, Alex. Equality nice. Another opportunity to steer public perception soon. It's really starting. I would actually believe he died of liver failure. The, the boundaries he pushed. To me, 
he'll always be the man in his pants cheering on a stranger at the back of the conference. It is my great honour to give to you the Peter Clement Memorial Garden. Oh, look at that picture of uh, Megan at the top left. Everyone with me. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Oh, what? Did somebody just bomb them? Now, Alex, control the message. I'm not leaving. I can't. Oi. You two, come with me. Don't panic. Come on. Come on. You're gonna be okay. Just. Mister. What are you doing? I'm not resisting. You're sure. I'm not resisting. Turn the camera off. Oh yeah, we want to show the bad stuff the government's doing. I said turn the fucking Who the fuck are you? Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear anything. Yes, you can. Medics are coming. You sit down. I can't hear you. I'm from the National Nightly News. Well, then you can consider this payback. Salisbury's still here. Julius Goldsbury! You were guilty of the murder of more than 10 million people! Justice demands a response! Haven't you done enough? Look Sorry. around you! This is what your precious freedom looks like, is it? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh my god. I said lower your weapons. Oh my god. It was unnecessary. Can't you see? Yeah, she's trying to do it for the cameras. Let's not show that. Shut the hell. I said turn it off. Oh. Shocking. Now we gotta follow this. Is this not enough? You've just seen them execute unarmed civilians. People like you and me. So why are you watching this? Why are you not in the streets with us tonight? What will it take for you to get up and be a part of this? March on team headquarters. Storm the building. Demand elections. Demand answers. Be what you were born to be. The once and future free. That means by now. Don't go away. We'll be back. After Oof. Oh, look at that. They have security right behind her. If everyone's safe, are the crew okay? Thank you, Alex. From all of us, you're Man. doing great becoming a weekly event. No, it's different tonight. This is the big one. Great. So there's a revolution happening outside and we're off to dangly fucking parts. That's journalism, apparently. Can we get set for the next sequence? I'm scared I'm going to see another big explosion go off or something. Well, what better way to celebrate than to go back to where it all started? Unnecessary collections and companion magazines. Join today and you can forget what we are advertising. Education, an unbearable sense of entitlement, and your own middle initials. And if you call now, you'll mm. also get this Alex, in your ability. During this next section, a cameraman working in the newsroom, who's one of us, is going to get a coded location out. We don't know yet which camera he's on, but if we find out, I'll let you know. Just keep your eyes out for the fist and try and keep it on the ear for at least five seconds. Oh. Our operatives will do the rest. Okay, nice. We're looking for some clue to help give out Craig? a secret location no. to everybody. No. Ten seconds, everybody. Sorry, Craig. It's a no. Okay, we are going in five, four, three... Welcome back to the National Nightly News with me, Megan Wolfe. Very shortly, we'll be heading on over to the final episode of what has quickly become a hugely successful feature, The Notice Board. But before we do, let's chat with Philippa Radon. Tell me, why do you think the public love The Notice Board so much? It's real. <laughs> there, I said it. It was terrible. It connects with people. You know, people it got very like, dark, right, Michael? Say, those are real people struggling with real problems. That's a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to my PA secretary as I got out the limo, I was saying, it's good for people to see normal, authentic people like them on TV. Mm, people like you. Yeah, precisely. Mm. Unfortunately, then I was 
interrupted by some dreadful wretch who wanted an autograph, but a swift kicking from security soon put him back in line. <laughs> Yes, well, oh, how nice. I think it's really good that our screens are filled with such relatable stories. So the notice board is coming to an end after a sensational time at the top. What do you think has made this show so successful? Oh, it's a combination of so many things. Um, my hard work, mm. um, my talent, my look. Wow. Mine, you mine, mine. Thank you for. Hey, hey, hey. <coughs> You're welcome. Mm. We've just heard so well our man's on camera four. I have a real sense of responsibility. Come back to the interview, Alex. I've been entrusted with something precious, and then I should use that platform for good. Is that five seconds yet? We should use this platform to, to do good in the world. I think that was five Which seconds. Exactly it. So I've decided to help as many. I had to tank my ratings to do that. Alex, that's the location shared. Next, you need to give them a go. Um, we're going to have to struggle to get these ratings back up. Child poverty. Oh, no, by adopting as many as I can get my hands on. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, how many How many children have you adopted? Oh, we're well into the double figures now, Megan. I stopped <laughs> it's not looking like good. <laughs> Goodness, that is a lot of children. Yeah, once we finish putting them into the guest room, I'll have to put a futon in the laundry cupboard. Oh, you really are some sort of hero. Hey. I live a privileged life. What can I say? I mean, any chance. Yeah, we would tell him. So that's one nice thing is when you are done with the chapters, you're able to review just the video you recorded to get the whole story uninterrupted. Oh, they're Northerns, I presume so. Which I think based on the stream time, we'll probably do at the beginning of the uh, next stream. 10,000 children have a celebrity parent. Hmm. I'd never thought of it that way before. Well, I'm doing everything I can to fix those numbers. What do you think it is about your life that's so desirable, then? Well, it's mainly shame and panic interspersed with expensive bottled water. So, uh, actually, if anyone wants to, I'd happily trade. Now <laughs> <laughs> that I can relate to. Right, <laughs> you better go off and get ready. That was Philippa Raiden sharing some thoughts about her lifestyle. I think it's really important to stay grounded uh, and keep everything in perspective. Clearly, not everyone else agrees. But that's enough for me. Let's go now over to Dangly Park. Oh, no. The final ever episode of the notice board. I'm going to try to do the good things here just because we got to get those ratings up. What a day! First the tea morning and now to post this notice. I don't know how I managed to cope with it all. Oh wait. Perhaps I do. <laughs> oh! By St. Barnabas, what on earth is all this? Freeze, dirtbag! The hell? Oh, Laura, it's you. I thought for a moment you were a knife-wielding mugger or stabber. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. It's just me. A community cohesion officer responsible for keeping crime at record lows. Of course. Keep forgetting that thanks to you and your colleagues, violence on our streets is a thing of the past. What's all this, Vicar? We're starting to build oh, up the ratings no. back slowly. It's a disgrace. Somebody it's time for the go code. Give us three bones in a row, Alex. That will start the pizza movement. We might just pull this off. Push forward! Alex. Careful, Vicar. I just did one boo, but I don't think it counted. Okay, we got to get more boos. There's one. Yes! It's no good. It looks like all those crucifit classes were a waste of time. That's two but booze. You, a young CCO would be yeah, they will. Two for two. Fantastic. <laughs> Looks like all those and three classes were a waste of time. <laughs> it's too heavy. Hey, we're back in the green on the ratings. You did it, Alex. We're good to go. This. Oh dear God! What's Did happening? Did someone call for the best firefighter in town? Not him again. Hi! Well, is that the algebra Captain guy? Captain Evans, you're so much stronger than us. 
especially me, the weak old man. It's the least I could do for my community. I guess it doesn't really matter if I do booze now. I'll just go back to what I'm supposed to do. No luck catching the little devil then? Unfortunately not. The ferret struck again last night. When Ray opened the post office this morning, he found that every single stamp had been pre-licked. <gasps> God! Some people have no decency. Sadly, if we don't catch him before tomorrow, we may have to cancel the village fate. <gasps> don't worry. We won't let that happen. Will we, Vicar? No, no, no. Laura, tell me, why do they call him the ferret? Some say it's because of his sneaky nature, but really it's because whenever he strikes, he always leaves behind the foul stench of urine. <laughs> Never fear, officer. What? We'll catch this pissy nuisance and save the village fate, or my name's not. Oh, I missed a swear. I wasn't paying Danger attention. Evans. The community cohesion team are doing their best, but they simply don't have the smarts to solve this mystery. But I know someone who does. Someone who's about to blow this thing wide open. <laughs> Me! Blackout! What am I supposed to be looking at? <laughs> They're all yellow. Ah. Uh, it's the morning of the village fate, thanks to theatrical convention. I sure hope everything goes to plan. Oh, look! There's Mrs. Craven setting up her cake stall. And look, there's the motorcycle display team setting up for a show that will be far too expensive for live television. I'm going to set up the coconut shy. What are you doing, Vicar? First, I'm running the tombola. Then, I'll be selling forgiveness for money. <laughs> are you judging the jam? Yeah. I couldn't possibly. Well, oh, that sounded like Mrs. Craven. <gasps> Looks like someone sucked all the jam out of Ooh. the donuts. That damn ferret has struck again. Whatever are we to do? Although I'm very competent, I have no idea how to solve this case. I guess we'll just have to cancel the fate. Hold it right there. So bad. Ferret. <gasps> Drinking from the fire extinguishers again? Not you! The vicar! Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. Admit it! You wanted the village fate cancelled so you could have the day off, didn't you? I already have to work Sundays. I just heard an explosion. I work two days a week! <gasps> but how did you know? Well, my first clue was the smell. Yes, I do smell of urine. Next! I noticed that the vicar's tongue was <laughs> I do dry, smell of urine. <laughs> almost as if what? he'd been licking thousands and thousands of stamps. Or perhaps eating Mrs. Craven's baking. <laughs> 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 Which brings me on to my third clue. The vicar said that he had no more room for jam. Almost as if he'd had his fill. Precisely. Making sure we're not getting attacked. But you managed to figure it all out from that. Well, I also... It's just uh, more propaganda they're forcing the on the scene. news. That proves nothing. None Think of like those, you know, like motivational, cringy plays you'd like see in like grade school, but for the news and just to promote the government, you essentially. You say you ferreted him out. <laughs> hey, come on. Let's go and have a party in my massive garden. I am doing well. Thanks to you, we're all doing well. <laughs> well that was it. The final ever episode of The Notice Board. And what a way to end the it. final ever, thank God. Jeff, Philippa and Tommy. After the break, we'll be both dancing and learning. So don't change that channel. We'll be right back. That's the ads. Well done, everybody. Wow! <laughs> what a brilliant run, eh? After party at my place, eh? Alex, this station is supposed to be unbiased. Your partisan behavior will end up getting us taken into public ownership even sooner. Uh oh. This is revolutionary zeal. Do your job. And how progressive their policies are. So, well, this is wrong. the tape they wanted us to play. And I'm here tonight to say 
I'm sorry. And to, to beg for your forgiveness. One last push, Alex. My parents are not We're closing in. One of the guests in the last section is working with us. Exactly. You'll be asked to censor on our behalf. If you do it right, the final orders will be given. We have three chances. Get at least two of them right, and we're going to win this thing. It's happening, Alex. Tonight we take it back. Yeah, that was something Disrupt gave us to play. Did he just say that we need to censor something on their behalf? Or do we want to avoid censoring something for them? I was glad to see the rich punished. I didn't see how backwards advance were. I didn't understand that rather than tearing down the wealth creators, we should have been helping everyone else to take a seat at their table. Under advance, the country is poorer. It is poorer in ambition. It is poorer in aspiration. We are infantilized by advance's naive policies. Policies born from Absurd, uh -oh. Security's there. Redistributive fantasies. I have hoard myself Looks like they have the another dance routine coming up. Indefensible. I have betrayed my parents. I see that now. Mum. Dad. I'm sorry. Our only hope. Oh my gosh. The Approved book hope. club. Now lies they might, we but tell them I'm kind of disrupt. worried. Okay, it's about to change. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later in this segment, we're hoping to be able to go back to Patrick Bannon at the scene of tonight's shocking disrupt attack. We didn't get to see but him in the first, first place. I'm delighted to be joined by the cast of the smash hit musical everyone is talking about. I'll be speaking with the cast in a moment, but first, let's take a look at them in action. Please give a warm That's going to be part of what we, I think, need to, to show, memories. actually, we Tome. The Novaries. Hello? Doctor? Yes, I see. Thank you for letting me know. I have a decent life. I'm a happy, loving wife. We need to get those ratings up. My job up. is well paid and fulfilling. I have a husband, John. He's due home soon, won't be long. And I have to tell him something that is absolutely chilling. We share coffee. Gosh, I just felt everything shake. It's so distracting jumping around from camera to camera. You poor unlucky chump. Is it cancer? Worse of John, we're having a baby. How can this be? Oh, no, it's me. Why has this happened to me? I always wear two condoms for the maximum of safety. That's not good. Glad we built a peaceful habitat. Now our lives are fucked. We're having a baby. Oops. I miss that swear. And there won't be any time for foot rubs. Now your hair will stink of weed. And you'll start to disagree. And forget about that holiday in Territory 3. No more waking up at half past ten. In fact, you're never going to get a good night's sleep again. No more snap decisions. They have some legitimately catchy songs in this, don't they? Oh, Slayer, thank you so much for the lurk. We're our top priority. I look after you, and you look after me. Ain't no trouble and strife, we got a childless life. 
This song kind of reminds me of that Welcome to the Internet no song. No the way it's like fast no and then goes real slow and builds back up. I don't know if there's anything here I need to like show or not. Um, broadcast for the resistance. Ratings are doing a lot better though. Like they don't want you to have babies. No. <laughs> Amazing. The Novaries there treating us to That makes sense, Novaries. Like ovaries, but no. Currently, the hottest ticket in the capital theater district. And we'll be oh, touring the we should watch what our camera guy's doing. Right then, come on, you got. Come on down. Let's go. Don't be shy. <laughs> oh, now they're just bringing these people in. Okay. Hi, Megan. Hi. It's an honor to be here. Oh, really? Are you fans of the show? Yeah, it used to be. <laughs> well. Listen, let's get stuck in. Used to be. You're amazing musical. Now, I mean, not only do you perform this show every single night. With matinees on Wednesday and Saturday. <laughs> right, but you're also the show's creators. Am I right? Well, everyone contributes their ideas, and then some of us went away and did the actual work on the script. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's very much a team effort. Oh, well, that's fantastic. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. I've not introduced any of you. <laughs> I'll be the one being replaced next. Let's go down the line, shall we? Hi. I'm Jack. <laughs> Jim Blunt. Pleasure to be here. Jennifer Boreham Woodley. Hello, I'm John. John Sapley. Used to be in the business professionally. My name's Jill with a J. <laughs> and I'm Janet. I'm the youngest. <laughs> That's incredible. Jill with the J? How else would you spell <laughs> you Jill? All friends previously. I mean, what a, what a coincidence, right? <laughs> uh, with, with, your, with your names begin, beginning with a J. Oh my goodness, guys! Our names all begin with J. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could do it with a G. Yeah, I never. Because I don't know if I've ever seen Jill like that. <laughs> I guess I've seen Jillian, but never just like it? someone calling themselves you? Jill. It's bloody obvious, isn't it? I just thought we were doing a funny thing where we never mentioned it. <laughs> and I believe, as well as being friends, you're also couples you know, in real life as well as in the show. Well, <laughs> oh, well. God, not exactly. No. I'm not married to him. Uh, <laughs> I'm with Janet. And I'm with John, you lucky bean. <laughs> Jim and I are married. Four fabulous years. <laughs> well, that must make for some confusion in the rehearsal room. Well, you should have seen the first draft. Jen decided that Jack would play Jim, I would play Jack. Jen, Janet, Jill, Jen, Janet, Jill. What the hell? What about John? Well, my character was originally just called Man One. It was allegorical. It was very confusing. Not for a professional. <laughs> After much doing and throwing. And gnashing and wailing. <laughs> And gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> we decided that we'd just use our own names, which um. I'm going back to laugh tracks for this. Right. We're also less likely to go into the wrong dressing rooms. Oh god, yeah, that would be very embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, of course, when I first wrote it, we were only meant to run for a few nights at the Nimbia Village Hall. But when I registered it with the Department for Culture, mm. it caught the eye of someone high up, and before you could say overnight sensation, we were transferring to the capital. <laughs> It's all been a bit of a roller coaster, really. Yeah. I'm only 19. I'm the youngest. You really don't have to repeat that. <laughs> I yeah, she my does. Job as a mortuary technician. Well, yes, we all had to move to the capital. <laughs> yeah. I love that job. It's been a very turbulent time. 
so peaceful, no singing. This piece. <laughs> that is interesting. Stand by, Alex. Censor the orange. Okay, I do need to censor stuff. And why you shouldn't have them. <laughs> In a way, I guess it is political, with a small p. After all, we are a solid unit, and eagle-eyed audience members will see we nod our heads to advance on stage throughout. And we target them so I just have to press a space bar as soon as that orange well stuff appears 35, on the screen. As they're the most likely to be afflicted by this terrible problem. Terrible problem. Having children. You understand, Megan. You clearly agree. Wow, this isn't about me. <laughs> of course, we see that there are advantages to a family unit, but eagle-eyed couples watch as the little parasites advance on their lives. And there's no time to play the guitar, get through a book, or watch a movie. They're exhausted, passed out on the couch by 20 to 9, for God's sake. You're very chatty tonight, dear. Usually I'm the chatty one, because you're the youngest. There's a lot no, to censor. Just basically I'm everything about not having kids. Janet. <laughs> Janet, please, Jennifer. Oh, well said, John. Thanks, Janet. Got you back. So, could, um, could you just tell us uh, what is the play about? Mm. What happens in yes. it? Yes. Well, go ahead. It's a tragedy, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. It's a tragedy watching and this John thing. John have their child, and then the story charts the downfall of their hopes and dreams. And there's lots of singing. And dancing. A lot. My character works at a menu centre for a distribution unit. <laughs> I Eagle love how much that guy hates the singing and dancing. A, a lot. Becoming a target for children's TV advertising at the age of 22, she decides to take drastic action. I can't really say more, though. Probably said too much. Yes. <laughs> so we're just censoring that woman, it seems like. <laughs> Which should be all of you. <laughs> For too long, we've been told that a life without children is somehow incomplete, that, that children are, are a blessing. Well, I've done the research and they're not. <laughs> Besides, there's already loads of bastards running around all over the place. So. <laughs> We just want people to have. I wonder the why they are so against having kids from like a government standpoint. You know, when I was fourteen, before I had come out, <laughs> I had an experience with a girl called Julia Jacobs. She was an experiment, I guess. You know, a chance to dip my toes into the. Fascinating. Well, thank you all so much for coming in tonight. I really hope you keep them dancing in the aisles for many performances to come. The noble is there. And I am pleased to say we can now go back to Patrick Bannon to get the latest from... Oh, we're back to the... Horrific events, Patrick. Yeah, where the attack happened. Okay. Thank you, Maggot. I'm sure we'll find out, Lee Patone. This is Patrick Bannon reporting from the scene of <laughs> right, tonight's Michael. devastating Boom. and symbolic attack tonight this evening. An attack which I myself have been found myself caught up in. I I'm still a little dazed and a little deaf, Megan. So I hope you'll forgive me. The attack me is still going on. It's time to speak with the Prime <laughs> Very Minister. Very new. Lots. Mrs. Salisbury, Lots you. of cringe. You're still here. The Prime Minister. And horrific death and nuclear explosions, least. apparently. Well, there were people that needed help. Any team player would have done the same. I don't deserve praise for being human. Yes, no. He was just doing here. it for the cameras. Or palisades. Or lemonade. Right. So, is the situation... Now, are we safe? Uh... Yes, um, the security services <laughs> You don't sound very sure about that. And have you seen this game, Fairy Do? That although Crazy. there have been some injuries, there were no civilian deaths here this evening. Oh, that's good news about the civ... Sorry, did you... Did you say no deaths? That's right. No civilian deaths. Oh, uh, we recorded a Just lot of civilian deaths. Just terrorists curtailed by law enforcement who were, as always, so cohesive. If I may, I have a message for your viewers. Of course, the camera, there's the ca speak there, on, on the camera there. Oh, do we get to censor Stay this? Stay at home tonight. Do not become another casualty of war. Disrupt have had their moment, but as the dear departed Peter Clements once famously said, it ends today. I wonder what really happened to Peter. Thank you, Prime Minister, for those strong words of strength. Back to the studio, Megan. Now in the studio with Megan Wolf. Now, Patrick Bannon there, bravely this reporting from the front line of tonight's horrifying bombing. Maybe you need to get checked out. Whoa, she almost passed out. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's national night news. But What's going on? Go, oh. One time. The victory is in sight, my friends. You have mobilised. You have come together. From our agents at the television networks, risking arrest and getting those words to you. 
to the many hundreds and thousands gathering to invade team headquarters. As I speak, we are turning the tide, and it is time for change. Tonight we topple their regime, and we also silence their mouthpiece. Channel One. It sounds like they might actually Raider. win. Out from the shadows, and they are not the overwhelming force that we have believed. The military have been actioned, and well, it's pretty scary out there tonight. So stay at home and stay with Channel One because the team has assured this program that the turbulence will soon be over and we can once again focus our minds on building the new future. Oh, look at that! Oh my god, they're like right outside. My name is Megan Wolf. Let's make tomorrow better. What have you been up to, Fairy Dude? What have you been playing? Tonight is the beginning of the fall of advance. Oh my gosh. They're taking down the whole news station. I'm thinking we don't have a job anymore. No. Can we can, can we get out of here? Can we go downstairs at least? Oh no, I think they took out Alan. Oh man. They found him. Crap. Well, we started something. Now, it doesn't seem like it, but allegedly there's still two more whole chapters to this game, which we're going to finish this game up on Thursday. We're getting to my bedtime. So actually what we'll probably do, and it'll help uh, refresh us as well, when we start the next chapter. Oh man, look at that huge dip I had right here. But I had to, because that was part of the game. When we start that last chapter, we'll do the recap of this chapter where we get to rewatch our broadcast and see the little bits we missed that fill in the details, and then we'll go to wrap up the game. Oh man, look at all these things I screwed up, <laughs> but the game wanted you to. Like, this whole big jump here was when I had to purposely focus the camera on, like, locations just so that, you know, they could get the news out. But I lost a lot of points doing that. Worth it. Worth it. We're still getting our full wages. Ah, we're not quite breaking even. Not awful, but not good. It could be worse. So we actually got a little bit more money. We're still in the red though, which is bad. It's like I'm trying to do good at my job for our family, but also trying to do good for the resistance. It's very tricky doing both. I like the music they play here. Okay, so yeah, this is the part where I want to continue right here. So we can jump in here, watch the previous broadcast, and catch us all up, and see the little bits and pieces in between we missed. And then we'll just wrap up the game. I can't wait. Okay, let's go ahead and save it there. This game is not what I expected at all, but it's really cool.